You know, as a small child who absolutely adored Star Wars, and especially Star Wars The Clone Wars, I often found myself wondering what would it be like to be a clone, like Captain Rex or somebody like that, or even better, what would it be like to be the commander of a clone army? Well, today, my friends, we are going to live out my childhood fantasies and figure out exactly what that would be like. So fasten your seat belts and hold on to your teeth, boys and girls, because Daddy Rat's gonna take you for a ride. And I wanna mention real quick that this this video is going to be a bit different than our other videos where I will create an army and just basically see how strong they are. No, no, no. In this video, we are actually going to be surviving with this army. Before we begin, though, I want to go over some stuff with you. So we have 56 clones in total. Every single clone, including the commander, have a set number of 10 for every single skill, and they all share the same traits. The only augmentation they have is a joy wire, because if I had to do this without them having joy wires, I very well might need a joy wire myself afterwards. Now, not every single clone is the same. The majority are a standard unit, but we do have a set of heavy units as well as a small group of snipers, along with the commander being, of course, the only commander. As you can see, the standard clone units have a very standard rifle, armor, as well as a vibro sword. In comparison, the heavy clone units have a much more powerful rifle and much more durable armor. Last but not least are our sniper units that have slightly better armor than the standard clone troopers, but have a much more powerful rifle that is much further in range. Now with all the boring yappity yappity bullshit out of the way, let's get started so we can start killing some people. You know, when I think of clone troopers, I don't exactly think of them building little wooden compounds out in the forest or little small wooden cabins, but unfortunately trees are the most abundant resource out here. We're going to begin by putting down some compact dirt pathing as well, that way I don't have a stroke trying to find all of our people and our items. We also didn't spawn in with any food at all, so we're going to begin harvesting berries, but also we're going to be killing some alpaca and stuff because there's plenty of wildlife. We also need to focus on getting some power up and going around here. I'm not going to build any turrets or anything like that, but it would be nice to see. And light bulbs are only willing to help you out with your problems if you feed them a little bit of electricity. But unfortunately, before we had the chance to build a generator, everyone got a little bit sweepy and they all went to bed. Hey, I gotta say though, honestly, the show me your hands mod actually makes it look so cute when they're sleeping. I think it's supposed to look like they're holding cover, but just out here, it just looks like they're holding their little hands up like a little panda bear. But that's enough talk about panda bears. We have a colony to build. I hate pandas, don't you? ever bring up pandas to me again. Anyhow though, moving on, we ended up building a fairly large freezer to keep all of our wild game in. Oh, he failed to construct it. Hmm. That's okay, there's always second chances in life, little buddy. By this point, the compound was coming along very nicely, and it gave me a moment to just sit and think of the best way to handle things. So I thought, I'm going to give us at least three days to prepare, and on the third day, I am going to launch our first large raid. Assuming that starvation doesn't begin to take us out by then because we have a lot of mouths to feed. As of right now, we still have plenty of wild game, but that would not always be the case. And even though we have a large stockpile of meat and whatnot right now, we have so many people to feed, we dwindle that supply very quickly. And I gotta say, I absolutely love doing little videos in colonies like this where we just have a smorgasbord of pawns. An army of clones is amazing to have for building and whatnot. Because with an army like like this, no matter how large a task is, it doesn't take them very long to get it completed. Now listen, having 56 pawns is an army, and I don't want to hear any if, ands, or buts about it. Oh yeah, Rat Knight, you call this an army? My computer could easily run 10,000 pawns. Okay, alright, look, I'm gonna level with you here. I know that this isn't really an army, okay? I'm poor and I'm not as cool as you. I don't have a really nice computer. But I would like one, and that's why you should support me on my new Patreon. The link for it is in the channel bio. Now, by this point, we have slaughtered countless of nature's beautiful creatures to fill up our little tum-tums, and we have plenty of leather left behind, so I had the bright idea that we would use all of that leather to build some sandbags for our very protection when we have our big raid. Speak of the devil, it is now day three and our clones have done the best they could to prepare themselves for what was in store. I decided to go with the highest point raid we could from the Federation, which is a faction from the Rimsenal pack. Now, if I said that I was expecting to lose this first raid, I would be lying because we have an absolute shit ton of units, so I knew we were going to win. I was just more or less curious to see how many units would die during battle. 
And to my surprise, we done extremely well. We didn't lose a single pawn during this raid. Now, some of them did end up getting injured, but I, if I'm not mistaken, I actually think that was from friendly fire, which was absolutely great. So great, in fact, that I thought instead of doing it every three days, we try and do it every single day because we are apparently a mighty force to be reckoned with. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, really, the only concern then is starvation, right? Wrong, because apparently those massive Federation robot things have synthetic meat within them. Meaning not only do we kick the shit out of them during raids, but we're not going to starve to death because we can eat them. We also began working on our storage facilities because with an ass-kicking machine like this clone army, we are bound to have endless supplies of resources and items. The very next day, I decided to kick things up a notch with two of the same size raids from the Federation. I thought maybe the first time was a fluke. We'll see how we do against two of them. Unfortunately for the massive, juicy, meaty robots though, this would end the same as the previous day. We had a huge pile of these meaty robots flopping on the ground like fish struggling to cling to life. But all we saw was another purple steak. You know what though, what good is having all this beautiful, tasty, and amazing purple steak if we can't all sit down like a family of the exact same person who just happens to be multiplied and enjoy it together with conversation and love. Ah, now that's more like it. A good old fashioned home cooked dinner with the family. Now, not only did those large robotic creatures give us plenty of food to eat, they also gave us a white metallic material called faux rum, which is extremely durable, so we decided we would begin building our city walls with it. Now, it doesn't matter too much, of course, because these walls are not meant to protect us, they're just to deter the enemy and make them go around the front. But speaking of the enemy, this time around, I decided to try the Empire, the Vanilla Empire, and I done three of the largest raids possible to see how we would do. But oh boy, Commander Napoleon was more than ready. However, my computer's CPU was not ready, so the following footage of the battle is sped up to immense levels to try and compensate for that. After easily dispatching of the three largest Imperial raids that we could concoct, I wasn't really sure where to go from here. So I kinda settled on some massive mechanoid raids to just drop right in on top of these soldiers to see how they would fare. It has become quite a trend throughout these videos that at some point when I have an army, I have to fight a massive army of mechanoids. It's almost like I have a grudge against them. <laughs> because I do. The mechanoids put up a very good fight though, but in the end, they couldn't even hold a candle to good old clone. Clone? Is his name Cl- Look at that, he has a name. His name is Kid. Well, that's stupid. In the meantime, though, we began putting out the immense fires caused by the massive raids from the Empire and the mechanoids, I assume. I'm not sure. We killed so many creatures and mechanoids and people, and it was all a, a good bit of fun. But it has made my memory foggy, and it has made me a tad bit weary. So I must go soak my feet or take a nap or something that people say is relaxing. You know, I recently created a video where I commanded a clone army and we built this neat little base that you're looking at right now. At the end of that video, I asked you guys if you think you would like a part two to this, and you guys said yes. So here we go. Naturally, we begin where we left off in the last video with fields of mechanoid and human corpses. So naturally, of course, we're going to have to deal with that the old-fashioned way, by turning them into crispy little bacon bits that we can throw on top of our salads. It's just a shame that we don't have any ranch dressing for them. Ah, oh well, we'll just make do with some of this synthetic meat. Maybe we can turn it into ketchup or something. As for the mechanoid carcasses, we'll let them rust outside in the rain until we're ready to shred them. During this video, we're going to be conquering other factions in our area. And unless you're a great big dummy, you probably already know that wars are expensive, so we're going to need plenty of steel, hence the mechanoid carcasses. Now we're going to need somewhere to keep all these resources, so we began digging out a large warehouse in one of the small hills next to the base. You know in these videos we're always talking about killing things, but what about the important stuff like playing horseshoes with your buddies? Oh never mind, they're leaving. Guess I'll just play by myself. Again. Alright, enough of that. Let's get back to business. We began building some machines tables because I had the bright idea to add the unofficial VE shields add-on mod and I was going to try to make some of these plasma force shield things but apparently I don't know how to read because those shields can only be created at a fabrication bench not a machining table so we ended up going with some riot shields instead however before we had all of our shields completed I decided to take everyone out on a raid everyone stuffed as much synthetic meat and rice as they could into their little clone armor pockets and then we all began 
plan to head out to go and kill everyone. It took a little while to get there on foot, but eventually we did arrive and we found a bunch of hairy, furry, man-baby creature things wielding rifles. They were all ripe for the killing. And so we began our march against them. All of our soldiers had the biggest smiles on their faces. You'll just have to trust me on that one. Unfortunately, the battle itself was not very eventful. We easily decimated their entire base and all of their forces. So instead of returning home, I said, ah, what the hell, we're already out here. We might as well kill everyone else. We went to two separate bases and the attack on both of those factions went about as well as you thought it would. We rarely ever actually took anything from the enemy factions like steel or any other resources unless we just thought we might need it. The only thing we were really after was some competition and there obviously wasn't any here. Later on, we ended up returning home where we would then build a high-tech research bench. This way, we could truly speed up our quest for knowledge. We also finally began producing some of those riot shields that I had mentioned earlier. They were far from perfect, of course, but they were the best we could do right now until we get a fabrication bench, so we doubled down production on them. And then we tripled down on production and also began shredding up those mechanoids for steel. We also continued our work on defending the base. Now, I wasn't too worried about anyone destroying the base. We could always rebuild it, but these walls would hopefully have them all funnel in in one place, making it easier for us to kill them. Uh, Rat Knight? That sounds an awful lot like a kill box. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it sure does, don't it? but it's not. Hey, uh, why don't you do me a favor? At one point, as we were all trying to enjoy some family time together with our clones, we ended up having a raid from the Federation. But unfortunately for them, their plump, meaty little robot bodies couldn't stand up to our blasters. Which is a shame, because I was really wanting to test out these shields. Oh well, there's always tomorrow. Believe it or not, they all got a bit tired of playing horseshoes with each other, so we decided to spice things up a little bit and build some chess tables for them. But you're not here for chess, are you? You're here to see me kill everyone. Well, lucky for you, our shields are finished and it's time for us to go and raid some other people. But first, a little midnight snack. Can't murder people on an empty stomach now, can we? Ah, off we go to commit more atrocities. I'm so proud of our little clone babies. They grow up so fast. We arrived at the enemy base that was apparently populated by pig people, but these little piggies didn't build their houses out of stone, so we immediately drenched them in blaster juice stuff. They died. On to the next one. Off we go to find more bases to ravage. Unfortunately though, even this Imperial base that we raided posed no challenge to us. Would there be no one to give us the challenge, the fight that we so desperately desire? We went base to base, faction to faction, looking for a real challenger. Yet every single time we would easily dispatch of our enemies, even the Federation at one of their bases posed zero threat to us. At this point I was more concerned that our soldiers might die to the common cold. Even so though, our quest for knowledge had recently yielded some interesting results. We had learned how to take our battles to the skies with shipbuilding technologies. But even better than that, we had learned about something incredible. Nuclear bombs. Now these bombs were very expensive, but they could do as much damage as all of our soldiers in one go. Of course though, we would need to test them to ensure that they were right for the job. Naturally, there was no one more fit for this mission than Commander Napoleon himself. Just after arriving on the outskirts of the enemy territory, Commander Napoleon began setting up his artillery cannon. He then began loading up the nuclear warhead and priming the cannon to be fired. And just like that, we unleashed absolute chaos upon this town. Dear God, what have we done? What have I created? I'm just kidding, I knew that was going to happen. Ah! <laughs> I tricked you, didn't I? Oh, you thought I felt some kind of pity or empathy? Never. After realizing just how crispy these nuclear bombs could make all of our enemies, we began to head back home. But this really got me thinking. So far, we haven't met a force that could actually challenge us, so I intended on creating one. I created an absolutely massive mechanoid raid. Now, when I created this raid, I wholeheartedly intended for this to be the end. I intended for these mechanoids to just absolutely slaughter us. However, the results of this battle may very well shock you as they did me. We would, of course, begin by using our nuclear arsenal against them. However, I didn't have enough resources, so I was only able to make small nuclear bombs. 
bombs. Though these nuclear bombs were very useful, unfortunately we weren't exactly accurate. So unfortunately we were only able to kill off the few that were trailing behind the main group. But that was quite alright, because what the nuclear bombs could not do, our brothers in arms could. Shield and blaster in hand, we were more than ready for this fight. As the mechanoids made their way around our walls, we began ripping into their units. And this is the part of the battle that really surprised me. Though they got a few good shots in at our soldiers with them all bunched up, we absolutely decimated the mechanoids. To try and even the odds, I dropped in two large raids of mechanoids on top of our troops. And this reminds me of a very valid question by our good friend Gavin Hone, I believe I pronounced your name right, who actually asks, why do you always bunch up your troops? A very good question, a very valid question. My answer to Gavin's question is to give the enemy some hope of winning. Even with the odds completely stacked against us, raid after raid we continued winning. After completely decimating an entire armada of mechanoids as well as the Federation and their meaty robots, I wasn't sure that anything could kill us. Every single faction on this planet now cowers at our feet, defeated by our almighty army of clones. Truly we have created the mightiest army. Huh, what's this? A siege? <laughs> Oh, they have no idea. Oh, to think these pitiful waster pirates think they stand any chance against us. Wait a minute, what's... Oh, shit. Yes, unfortunately, it would appear these pirates came prepared. They have brought their own nuclear bombs. We were too busy fighting off the last of the Federation and the mechanoids to even realize what was happening. <laughs> We unfortunately didn't get to really see any effects from the bombs, we mostly just got the really cool noises that they made, but we didn't get a lot of flames and stuff like that. However, regardless of what they looked like, they did finally manage to stop our clone army. I mean, in the end, I suppose it is justified we killed hundreds of thousands of people. Besides, none of us ever really make it out in the end, do we? Ah, it is so sad to see our creations destroyed, all lying dead. What was it all for? What do we do all this for if they're all just going to die in the end? It just doesn't seem fair, you know? We worked so hard on our clone army, we done all the research, we done all the construction, we done all of the murders and the killings. It's just, it's just not fair. I think we've waited around long enough though, we've waited day after day month after month as the seasons change i just sit here hoping that they'll get back up but they never do i just wish that there was someone who could do something about this Dear God, Napoleon, he lives once more. Good to see you again, Commander. You're looking a little <clears throat> green around the gills, pardon my French. And also your armor is a bit damaged. Maybe we could get you something. Oh, there we go, that's much better. The Commander is back in action, baby. And might I just say that he looks absolutely stunning, fabulous. New armor, a new weapon, the same old rotting body, but you know, you can't have everything. And we even have our old army back. There's only one reason that anyone would bring this clone army back back from the dead, to destroy, pillage, and conquer, and that's exactly what we intend to do. However, our home has been destroyed in the previous battle, we're going to need a new one. It also appears that while we've been gone, there are some new factions on this planet. One of the more interesting factions apparently controls a void tech laboratory. I don't know what that is, but I think it'd make the perfect place for a base of operations. So we sent our troops out on foot, and after a few days they finally arrived at this laboratory. The laboratory was absolutely massive, and that was perfect, it was exactly what we needed. Oh, what's this? I'm sure that's nothing to be concerned about. There didn't appear to be many people, so we weren't too concerned on taking the base. The only real challenge we thought were their defenses. Little did we know what horrors wait within. We marched on towards the base though and immediately began raining down hellfire upon their defenses, destroying most of them. 
Some of their members began trying to attack us, and though they were extremely quick, we did manage to defeat them as well. Now, let's crack this laboratory open and see what's inside. Oh my god, what the f- Alright, alright, let's calm down. We're going to cleanse this laboratory of the disgusting growth, filth, whatever these creatures are. If we want this base, we're going to have to earn it. By this point, we had cleared out the majority of these infected, the void, scientists I suppose you could call them, and any defenses they had within. We began going room to room to ensure that everything was clear and to see what our new base held. And then just like that, we had a brand new home. Now don't get me wrong, it was actually very difficult clearing out void and all of the infected, but we did manage to do it, and we managed to do it without one casualty. And now that we finally conquered this base, we can have some delicious meals. Oh yeah, that's good. You know, Void may be evil, but boy oh boy do they have some comfortable beds. I mean, sure, we're probably laying in some bed where someone's organs were harvested, or maybe they had some kind of experiments done on them, but beggars can't be choosers. And we were grateful for our new home, but the place would need plenty of repairs from the battle. So of course, we began working around the clock to try and repair all the damage that was done. It's also worth mentioning that when we <clears throat> inherited this base, we also inherited all the resources within. So we would immediately begin building some artillery cannons and then immediately begin working on some nuclear bombs to try and defend ourselves from Void when they come back. And believe you me, they will come back for this base. Just as well, we're going to be cracking down on research projects to ensure that we stay ahead of the game when it comes to technology. Ah, uh, but we just could not get over how nice this place was. It had it all. Nice beds, we had nice artwork, dragon statues. I mean, we even have red wine. What more could we want? Well, I'm glad you asked, because something that we may want is to build some defenses. Because without defenses, Void is going to come back and absolutely stomp us. So that's exactly what we began working on. We also began deconstructing some of their things like their drop pods so that we could replace them with our very nice ships. Not only were they more efficient, but good god just look at them. That's beautiful. Things were honestly going very well for us. We had a highly defendable large base and it was perfect. We had all the resources we could want except a few. And most importantly, we had our clone brothers. But speaking of our high powered clone brothers, there were also some high powered soldiers nearby. A trade caravan from none other than the UNSC had arrived. They were looking to trade goods and whatnot, but we were more interested in their Spartan soldiers. Not only did these Spartans have some wonderful, powerful armor, but they also had bionic body parts and a joy wire already installed. They were practically made to join our army. However, they didn't exactly feel the same way because when we tried to arrest them to recruit them, everybody fought back. So unfortunately, we had to slaughter them. But hey, on the bright side, we now have two Spartan friends. Well, we will after we brainwash them. And if you're wondering whether or not I added the UNSC faction solely so that I could have Spartan Spartans in our army. Yes, yes I did. But I mean, I practically had to. Spartans are so badass, and look, it looks just like the meme. Look, you can thank me for adding Spartans in the comment section down below, but for right now, we need to work on some anti-air defenses. Anti-air defenses are going to be quite useful for when we're getting raided by people like the UNSC, the Federation, etc. However, when it comes to Void, that's not exactly going to work because they normally have a Void Flare that's going to shut down all of our electronics. Regardless, though we ended up researching the smaller ones and we ended up building quite a few of them around our very large base to try and encompass the entire area. Later on we would build a medium sized one in the center as well. After that was completed we decided to go on a bit of a bombing run because the best defense of course is a good offense. We decided that we would drop two large nuclear bombs on a nearby void laboratory. Now this is not only to try and kill the inhabitants of said laboratory, this is also to test the strength so that we know how strong our own bases. But then again, if we also wipe out another large void laboratory from the face of the planet, that's not a problem. The two pilots took off and went on their bombing run. Unfortunately though, the bombs basically did zero damage to the base. I'm not sure if there's just so many walls or the fact that the walls are made out of plasteel, but it did basically nothing. The two pilots then jumped back into their jets and took off very quickly before being caught by Void. 
Later on after returning home, we ended up having a massive raid from the UNSC. However, you may notice in this raid, there isn't exactly standard UNSC soldiers. Along with their Spartans, ODSTs, and Marines, there were several soldiers donning T-45 power armor and wielding miniguns. There were also several of their soldiers wearing Grey Knight's power armor and carrying massive incinerators. Just as well as their interesting inclusion of different armors and soldiers from other factions, they also had some alpha mechs along with them as well who were quite powerful. And we asked ourselves, what were we going to do? Well, naturally, we began bombing the absolute shit out of them. And that seemed to do the trick for the most part. We couldn't just leave their remaining forces out there to suffer though, that would be inhumane. So instead of course we went out and blasted them with our very painful burning lasers. And you know, I think that they were pretty grateful that we did. <laughs> Ah, you're welcome, little buddy. Anyhow though, all of those nuclear bombs were beginning to give our soldiers a little bit of radiation poisoning. But that was okay because we all started feeling a little bit better when we realized that the two Spartans had finally joined us. We unfortunately didn't have any of our wonderful blasters for them, but we gave them some of the weapons that their friends have when they die. Now look, I know the Spartans aren't going to be able to single-handedly take down Void or anything, but they're a nice addition to the team, and I'm a huge Halo fan, so it kind of tickled my fancy that they joined us. But speak of the devil, we now have a raid from Void. They immediately began dropping in right on top of us and they also knocked out our electricity, meaning that our anti-air guns done nothing. All at once they burst forth from their pods and we immediately began firing upon them. But after a few moments of fighting, we had actually managed to defeat them. And I have to be honest, I expected much more from the big bad Void faction. <laughs> huh, what's this? Oh, shit. Some things never change. War is one of those things. War requires courage and discipline. Most importantly, it requires sacrifice. Make no mistake, my friends. We are now at war, and sacrifices are going to be required for our survival. Our last remaining nuclear bomb seemed to destroy the majority of the infected forces, but also killed our Spartan Don. After his heroic sacrifice, Napoleon then led the army to take out the remaining infected forces. There were still quite a few of them left, but luckily for us, the largest, the fastest, and the strongest seemed to have been killed by the nuclear bomb, which was mighty convenient because I didn't feel like having to fist fight some of those massive black titans or the hell dog creature things. So we began moving all through throughout our base, killing the remaining rumblers, I believe they're called, that had made it inside. After that was all said and done, believe it or not, we had plenty of fires that had spun up from the nuclear blast, just as well from other electronics that had been destroyed. So we had to start beating off the fire, <coughs> beating out the fires. Luckily, our other Spartan, Taylor, was not dead, though she was very badly injured. We scooped her up and put her in a bed, that way we could finally begin patching her up to ensure that she doesn't die. As one might imagine, the massive infected ray and the giant nuclear bomb that went off in the front of our base caused a teeny tiny bit of damage. So our army of cold-blooded killing clones had to turn into a little bit of an army of architects. Not only that, but many of them also had to become a bit of an army of custodians because we had a massive mess to clean up with all these rotting infected corpses. Lucky for us though, you couldn't smell the stench through our helmets. <sighs> Ah, new car smell. Thankfully, after some time as well, the flare that was caused by the Void Raid ended, but it would still take a while before the toxic fallout would go away. That wasn't too big of an issue for us because we had a beautiful base still on the inside, and besides, the worst part of it was just a little bit of shitty green air. We started mining out some resources from some nearby hills because we were running a little bit low on normal steel. We have been, and still are, using a lot of steel for our defenses. Now, I know what you're saying, why not use plast steel? you have so much of it? Well, that plasteel is a secret tool that we're going to use later. I don't want to ruin any surprises. You may notice though, the new barriers that we're building are quite a bit better than the barricades. They actually have a cover effectiveness of 65%. And our barricades are going to keep us safe. Safe enough that we can sit around and watch television. You know, speaking of television, I always wondered what was on these TVs here in RimWorld. That's so strange. What, what are you guys watching?
Thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring today's video. Oh wow, now these seem like some quality products and services. Look, I'm going to be real with you, I use Surfshark VPN to protect my data. Being out here in the rim of the universe, there are several galactic factions who are always trying to steal my grand ideas. I mean, God forbid they wind it up in the hands of Void. Look, their amazing VPN keeps me secure while I'm on some sketchy outer planet Wi-Fi. It's kind of like a secure stargate between devices and the internet. Truly amazing. It also allows you to change your location so while you're browsing, say, Netflix, you can access different shows and movies not available in your home country. Which, I must admit, is pretty dang amazing. Enter promo code RATNIGHT for an extra three months free. The link is in the description down below. Once again, thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. Now, back to the chaos. You know, by this point, I realized that Void had left a lot of implants and chemicals behind in this laboratory, and I started thinking, what would it be like if we used those on one of our soldiers? Better yet, what if we used these on Commander Napoleon, and instead of just giving him a few, we just kind of mixed them all up and just kind of shoved them right on him? Now, I'm not normally one to start using all these chemicals and whatnot, especially made by Void, but... Desperate times call for desperate measures. So we began installing some of the more interesting looking implants as well as giving him these serums. And now I know what you're thinking, Rat Knight, that could be dangerous. What if he dies? Well now that is a valid question and a very good question as well. So we're gonna shove him in this thing called a rebirth tank. That way in case he does die, he'll be rebirth. I mean, I assume that's what the rebirth chamber is for. Maybe that's how Void never dies or when they do die, they come back to life. Besides, what's the worst that could happen. Oh shit, it's Napoleon. He's, well, he's looking a little bit different. All right, look, I, I get it. He's ugly now, okay? I mean, just look, oh God. But look, he's still the same good old commander that we know and love. As a matter of fact, thanks to all the serums, implants, and the rebirth chamber giving him this new infected body, he's actually much stronger, faster, and just better. But Jesus Christ, we need to find a bag or something to put over his head quick. You know, instead of a paper bag though, I think we should give him a proper set of armor that really goes with his new appearance. And that is why I have installed the mod for the Purge Trooper armor, which is very dark and red and looks really badass. I truly think it's the perfect set of attire for such a beautiful strapping young lad. And now with his new massive manipulation stat, it didn't take very long for him to make the entire set of armor. We also ended up giving him another blaster and I made it so that he could dual wield both of them because I thought it was cool. It also makes sense that he could dual wield them now since he's a big chunker. With his new found body and armor, we are ready to take on Void. But there was one small little thing, a big chungus like this needs a big chungus ship to ride around in as well. So we built a massive ship known as an albatross with a much higher crew capacity. We decided to launch our fleet of ships in search of uranium, and now we know one faction that's always got uranium, and that is Void. We arrive nearby just on the outskirts of a void fortress. Now this is not a laboratory and the reason that that is key is I had no idea. Apparently the fortresses don't have uranium. And I wouldn't find out that little tiny bit of information after we slaughtered every single person within. But that was okay because we would have a hell of a time killing every single void scientist and soldier. But make no mistake that this battle would be extremely difficult. As we approached the front of the building, they all came crashing out at us. Of course we immediately began returning fire at them, but we had less soldiers this time around, and unfortunately, Void would end up getting the better of a few of our men. Unfortunately, after it was all said and done with this battle, we had lost three of our brothers. Two normal kid clones and one kid heavy. I wish I could say that their sacrifice was worth it, but it really wasn't. We didn't even find a drop of uranium. We went around the different sides of the base and began blasting holes through their walls to see what was within, and then we immediately just went through the front entrance because that was much easier. Now by this point we've already killed all of the void soldiers and whatnot so we just went around cleansing the base from any infected. And like I mentioned when it was all said and done we were negative three soldiers, our brothers, and still no damn uranium, so I don't know how we're gonna build any bombs. But then an idea came to me. We have so much silver. Why are we bothering attacking for uranium when we could just buy it from Outlander factions? So that's exactly what we began doing. They didn't have much per base, so we had to go to several different bases all around this section of the planet. Luckily, the Albatross had plenty of room for uranium as well as plenty of fuel. And by the time that we got home, we had a little bit more uranium than we had before. And we still had a lot of silver left 
left over as well. Now we can finally get back to building some nuclear weapons. Some time later though, we had a raid from our old friends, the Federation. <laughs> oh, still as weak as ever, I see. Hey, wait a minute. What's, what's that? Holy shit, the Federation are making their very own clones modeled after Napoleon and his soldiers. I suppose all the times that we kicked their ass, they must have somehow swiped a little bit of DNA off of us to make these soldiers after Napoleon. A little strange that they're all female, but hey, maybe the genetics got messed up or something. Regardless though, this was a fight that we were eager for. Finally, someone other than Void who can actually provide a challenge in battle. Or so I initially thought. Immediately after firing at them, they all began dropping like flies. I suppose they must have got the DNA confused with some pansy-ass soldier who dies so easily. Oh, you poor, poor, stupid little creatures. You're not even as good as a copy of the copy's copy. It was best we put them all out of their misery. At this point, we loaded up a fusion bomb to go and bomb a void laboratory. However, it must be said that I did cheat just a tiny bit. So to create a fusion warhead, you actually need an anti-grain warhead, and unfortunately, you can't craft those or purchase those. So I changed it a little bit. That way, instead of one anti-grain warhead, we could actually use 1000 plasteel. And look, I know it's technically cheating, but I could have just as easily added a mod that made anti-grain warheads craftable or purchasable. Hmm, maybe that was a better idea. Oh well. Anyhow though, we loaded up the bomb and made our way to the Void Laboratory where we would then drop it. As it stands currently, fusion bombs are the strongest bombs that we have, but we are also dropping a few large nuclear warheads just as well for a little added damage. The bombs went off and created such devastation, I believe they may have also hit some explosives that Void had within their buildings as well. We absolutely wrecked this base. I mean, it is a complete shit show now, but even so, after after all that, we still had many Void soldiers who were still alive. Thankfully though, we were able to dispatch of them fairly easily. With their base left in ruins, with their soldiers and their scientists all dead, there was but one thing left for us to do, and that was go home. And though this was a monumentous victory for us, this was just the start. That was one fusion bomb and a lot of large nuclear warheads on one Void base. We still had a lot of work left to do. Hello and welcome everyone back to our clone army. First things first today, we're going to be researching some ships from the Star Wars universe per everyone's request. We're really just shooting for the LAAT ships because these were kind of like the troop transport ships from the Clone Wars. And that's basically exactly what we need to be able to drop our entire army off at the doorstep of Void before slaughtering them. So of course we wasted no time and immediately began working on researching this technology. In the meantime, Time, however, we're going to use our current ships on a raid against the UNSC. Not really for any particular reason, other than to establish dominance and maybe take a few resources, whatever they have. They do have quite a few outposts nearby to us, so destroying these outposts will actually prevent them from frequently raiding us. It didn't take us very long to arrive in our ships just on the outskirts of their base, and as we flew over, we could see their troops, all gathered in mass. Whatever type of union or a absorption that the UNSC had with the Brotherhood of Steel and the Space Marines and whatnot was extremely apparent. You could see the stark clash of color and the differences in their armors and just basically how they look. It was so beautiful seeing that they were all living in harmony. Real shame we have to kill them. Oh well, maybe we'll take some of them as prisoners and recruit them. Probably not though. We moved in on the base as swift as eagle talons and just as sharp or something. And anyway, we began shooting all of them, destroying their turrets, and you know how it goes. They put up a fairly fierce fight, but after we had killed so many of them, they decided to cut their losses, tuck tail, and try to run. It was at this time we began exploring the wreckage from the base looking for resources. We found a good bit of advanced components in plasteel as well as weaponry. The plasteel was nice, the advanced components were, eh, we really needed you 
uranium, but that was okay. After collecting all of these resources and loading them up into our albatross as well as the other ships, we headed back home. And of course, after returning, we used some of the resources that we had collected to begin working on more fusion and nuclear warheads to fight Void. Because naturally, throughout this series, that is basically our main goal now. And by this point, the base was coming along quite nicely. We were living in harmony. Void hadn't attacked us in quite a while. None of the infected had showed up at our doorstep needing eradicated until it ended up happening. A fair-sized group of void drop pods had popped in just outside of our base walls, except for one or two little stragglers who made it inside. Those who made it inside were immediately met with hails of blaster fire that killed them, and for whatever reason, those who were outside decided to steal what they could and run away. I know, I thought that that was a bit anticlimactic myself, but fear not, my friends, that this was simply the calm before the storm. We immediately had two follow-up raids that crashed right right into the main section of our base. Thankfully, given what had just happened with the previous raid, the clones were all on heightened alert. So as the Void associates and whatnot burst forth from their transport pods, we immediately began firing at them, killing them quite quickly. Ha! Huh, that was incredibly easy, I said to myself in my head. However, I forgot the little detail that some of them tend to come back to life. So as we were taking their bodies out to the body pile, they sprung back to life and began attacking our clones. This wasn't too big of a deal, except for the fact that we have a lot of friendly fire happening and unfortunately we ended up killing one of our very own clones. Oh, poor kid. Not kid because he was a child, but kid because that was his name. Yeah, you already know this poor, poor bastard. This kind of made me think that the three clones that died in last episode didn't get a proper burial either, so I thought maybe we should make a memorial statue and we should bury this clone in the center of our base. And you already know that Napoleon is cooking up some wicked plans to go on a bombing run at a void base to make them pay for this. Sure, we accidentally killed him, but it was because they attacked us. We brought the Albatross to a nearby void laboratory, but not only would we use the Albatross, we would also call in backup from back home. This would allow us to hit the laboratory from two separate angles with fusion and nuclear warheads. And so that's exactly what we did. That bombing run looked really badass, I know, and it was really cool and actually very effective at taking down the Void base. However, we were starting to run very low on resources as these bombs were very costly. So we began deconstructing the massive ship at our base for resources. Just as well, I thought the massive landing pad that it was sitting in would be perfect for a massive landing pad for our new up-and-coming ships that we're still researching. And now speaking of these new up-and-coming ships, we're going to need some new resources to actually be able to build them, so we decided to go out and do a bit of trading with some of the Outlander groups. We would end up purchasing some chem fuel from them as well as some cloth because the LAAT ships require quite a bit of cloth. Now the chem fuel is just because I was too lazy to raid anyone for chem fuel for our ships or create any. After returning home we ended up having 971 cloth and 828 chem fuel. Now that seems like a lot, but it's really not, so we're going to actually create a massive growing zone where we're going to grow plenty of cotton, that way we can have a lot of cloth for these ships. Now, I'm not going to lie to you though, I'm not very patient, so in future episodes we may end up just doing more trading and raiding for plenty of cloth, but we'll see how it goes. Even with a massive field like this, I don't know if we're going to have enough cloth right off the bat after a harvest though, because just one of these ships requires 1,650 cloth, which is a shit ton of cloth. I'm thinking our best solution to that is probably going to be orbital trade ships, maybe like a bulk goods one. Until then though, I have also added the mod for EMI shielding. Basically what this is, it's a solar flare shield and my hope is that this will work against void solar flares. Will it? I have no idea, we'll have to test it. So we immediately began working on researching that as well. While we were researching the solar flare shield, I also began working on some defenses around the base. We actually began working on some automated turrets. Now you're probably asking yourself, Rat Knight, why would you need automated turrets when you have a literal clone army? Well, you see, when we go out on these raids, we normally leave one or two clones behind to continue researching and things like that, meaning that they're very vulnerable to a strike. Thus, why we need to build some turrets and whatnot to kind of help protect them. And after some time, we had finally finished the EMI shielding, and we decided to go ahead and start working on one to see if it would work against Void. Is it, uh, is it, is it, uh, working? I, I don't know, it kind of looks like it's 
working, I guess. I'll keep you posted on that when we get another raid from Void. Now we have to address the concern of our dwindling resources. Given our bomb production as well as our upcoming projects with ships and whatnot, our plasteel reserves are extremely low compared to what they were. And this time around, we're not going to be doing any trading to find some. That's right, we are actually going to begin raiding Void specifically for resources. And also because we hate them. It of course didn't take us very long to arrive, just on the outskirts once again of their very large and beautiful laboratory. Blah, blah, blah. Where's the plasteel, damn it? You know, I actually did notice something very strange happening. Now, sometimes I'll defog these bases just simply because if I don't, my computer almost shits out a lung because it can't handle what's happening. But this time around, as the bombers kept arriving, it kept defogging and almost despawning some of the walls and whatnot, so this base looks a little odd. But that makes it one hell of a lot easier for us to start dropping bombs on them because the less plasteel walls they have, the less protection they have. We dropped one fusion bomb and a few large nuclear warheads right in the center of the base, and this managed to kill quite a few of the Void Associates. The few stragglers that did remain, of course, came at us and tried to attack us, and they were obviously obliterated by our clones. So after murdering all the Void Associates and completely destroying the base, you can see it, look, there's a little card that says it, we of course began to move in, destroy whatever turrets they had left, and start sifting through the rubble to find some of that sweet, sweet plasteel. And of course we had to eradicate the last remaining abominations that Void had created, this stomach monster lady thing. This planet is only big enough for one disgusting, ugly abomination. And his name is Napoleon, baby. Luckily they did have plenty of plasteel here. It wasn't as much as I had anticipated. I don't know if that was caused by the loading bug, or if we destroyed it with all our bombs, but we still had some. We gathered up all our troops though and began to make our way back home with all of our newfound resources. Not only did we have plenty of plasteel and whatnot once again finally, but we had some red wine once again. Our clones are a little bit of an alcoholic, but you know what? They done a damn good job out there, so I'm going to let them indulge in their addiction a little. Nothing like cracking open a cold brewski with the boys, who also happen to be clones of you. But but they have my respect. That was a damn fine job out there today, boys. A damn fine job. That's me. The guy in the chains. I guess you're probably wondering how I got here, huh? Well, my friends, I'd be more than happy to tell you that little tale. But you're gonna have to wait just a moment because the torturer is back. Ah, uh, this guy. He's quite the little scoundrel. If you'll excuse me for just one second. Ooh, that that does not tickle. Okay, all right. Let's let's tell the story. It was a standard operation just like any other. My army and I were tasked with taking down the UNSC of this planet as well as the heretics. Nothing that we hadn't done a thousand times before. And we had multitudes of soldiers among our ranks. The majority of our forces were comprised of some minor elites called hinge heads with the corresponding armor and weaponry. They were essentially cannon fodder. Next up we had our major class, nicknamed Squid Face, with the corresponding weapons and armor as well. Next up we had an interesting class, our hinge head snipers. Now they were kind of normal except they had beam rifles and you may also notice that they have a cloaking device. And last but not least we have our meaty boy Saint Healy. This is a minor class that specializes in needlers. Now with all that boring yakety yak bullshit out of the way let's kill something. We spotted the heretic base not far from where we landed and of course we quickly made our way there so that we could cleanse this planet of their filthy blast for me. Their base was extremely large, but that was quite alright. It just meant that there were more of them to slaughter. And that, of course, is immediately what we began doing. They began running at us with their human-made armor and weapons. Blech, disgusting. And we brought down the might of the prophets upon their filthy hinge heads. 
Those scaly, four-jawed bastards never seen it coming. After a while of torturing them and pillaging their lands, we had finally destroyed their base. But this, my friends, was nothing but a small appetizer for the full entree of the UNSC awaits. And if we plan on earning our spot in the great journey, we are going to have to murder them all. We immediately began clearing out the rest of the heretic base to ensure that there were none of them hiding. After ensuring that there were no more blasphemous bastards among us, we all began having a little snooze out in the grass and just daydreaming of our lords, the forerunners. Ah, ever so relaxing. Since we didn't have any permanent base or anything on this planet just yet, we decided to make a temporary one here for the night. We began moving furniture around and whatnot to ensure that we were quite comfortable while we were staying here. But the very next day, we would begin making plans on our first assault on the first UNSC base. It should be quite easy as the UNSC has yet to be aware of our presence on the planet. So we set our sights out on this first base and made our way there. And though this base was quite large, just as we had suspected, their defenses were lacking. With that as well, even though they had several ODSTs and Marines, they were lacking many Spartans. With defenses like these, how could we not attack? It was like taking methane from an ungoy. Just so easy that you just, you just can't help yourself. Their soldiers were caught completely off guard by our assault, which was perfect just as we had planned. We slaughtered them all on the battlefield and eventually we had defeated them. And so we were off to the next UNSC base to demolish it and murder everyone there, of course. Just after arriving at this base, we did notice some heightened defenses. It is possible, of course, that they had heard what had happened to the last base and were trying to prepare for our arrival. But we had something up our sleeve for these filthy animals. We were going to glass this base. One once the glassing began, the humans and their structures were turning into dust on the ground. After giving them a taste of our holy fire, we moved in with our army to finish off any remaining soldiers. Then the pathetic cowards began to flee. Some time later, after eradicating several more UNSC bases that was just basically some more of the same, we move in and slaughter them, we decided that it was time for us to set up our own permanent outpost. Lucky for us, we had been collecting quite a few resources from the heretics and the UNSC bases that we were destroying, just basically what was left over like beds and stone blocks, steel, plasteel, etc. And this ensured that we were able to create some very nice housing as well as a very nice base overall to stay in during this time. I mean, just look how nice and cozy our St. Healy are. After saying their prayers to our forerunner gods, they're all just lying in their bed, dreaming of the great journey. Now the base was looking a little bit drab, so I thought, hey, maybe we throw a little bit of Covenant purple in there. So we started building some barricades as well as plasma turrets for defenses. Not only did these look a lot better, but they would also keep us somewhat safe. Naturally, of course, we also built a place to prepare meals as well as dine with our comrades. We also created a nice small area for our storage. And after some time, we finally had a wonderful little outpost. Sure, it looks kind of like dog shit, but it was extremely fun. Functional. And hey, I mean it has some pretty cool blue lights. But blue lights were not cool enough to save us from what was coming. It would appear that our gods have reawakened, and they were not happy. It may be possible that they were extremely angry about the UNSC and heretic presence on this planet and they had planned on bringing their wrath down on those who were supposed to stop it. Or maybe it's possible that our entire religion is a death cult and the great journey is just one big sham. Nah, that can't be it. Either way though, these forerunners were packing heat and they were coming to try and kill us so naturally the only thing that we would be able to do is defend ourselves. I'm sure the prophets will understand. I mean, they seem like very caring and sweet overlords. Anyhow though, our army prepared for this massive battle against the Forerunners. It was going to be quite difficult, especially with them having more advanced armor and weaponry, but we would defend ourselves or die trying. As the massive Forerunner army approached, we immediately began opening fire on them and actually managed to have some success with killing several of their soldiers. Obviously though, it helped quite a bit that the first wave of their massive raid was 
was such a small party, we would not be so lucky in the future, I'm sure. Their installation monitors as well as their soldiers were extremely resilient though, so we would have to continue pushing forward. We even managed to request a glassing from a nearby ship who had no idea that they were basically glassing their gods. And it was during this time as well the UNSC dropped in from above to join the fight. We would now have to fight a war on both fronts against the Forerunners as well as the UNSC. We were not equipped for such a large battle. We began throwing down our bubble shields to try and protect our soldiers. It was at this point I, the commander, Wartwart, had fallen. But my men continued to fight on. By this point in the battle, many of our men had been lost as well as many of the Forerunners. Even the demon was here, and he was causing immeasurable chaos upon the battlefield. We attempted to flee- <coughs> we attempted to make a strategic retreat, I mean, away from him. To, no, we weren't running away. But unfortunately, this would prove to be futile. He shot his weapons so fast that it was almost as if there was a little blue e-girl in his head telling him where to aim and what to do. Unfortunately, his might knew no bounds, though there was no way for us to escape and or fight him off. He murdered and maimed so many of our soldiers. It was a true catastrophe. It was disgusting to even look at. He snuck up behind our last remaining hinge head and blew his brains out all over the ground. What a savage animal. Unfortunately though, we had been defeated. There was nothing more we could do. Our soldiers lie on the ground in pools of their own blood, our false gods burning. A rescue team did arrive and luckily I had survived. However, being the only surviving member and also being the commander, the entire thing was blamed on me. And now if you'll excuse me, I think the executioner wants to have a word. <laughs> yep, that's me again. I just can't seem to stay out of trouble, can I? I'm quite the little troublemaker, and today I'm making my grand escape. Somehow, in some way, after the shootout with the guards, I managed to make my way to a drop pod. I wasn't very sure what planet this was, or if I was even going to land on it and survive, but it was much better than facing the Covenant. You could maybe say that I've burned my bridges with them. After they labeled me a heretic, tortured me, and tried to execute me, I wasn't going to stick around. But mark my words, I will have my vengeance. Jesus, this place is a dump. Ah, that's okay, though I guess anything's better than my previous situation. Our landing location is fairly mountainous, so it should be fairly easy to defend it. One of the first things we're going to be doing is deconstructing some of these old ancient structures, that way we can build ourselves a defendable small home. Not only a defendable home, but also a warm home, because if you did not notice, it is a permanent winter on this planet. And we are butt-ass naked. The only thing we managed to swipe when we left in our drop pod was a plasma rifle and a jackal shield. Not exactly ideal attire, but that was okay, we would build a campfire to keep us warm for the time being. Ah uh, yes, that should keep our saying Healy hose nice and warm. <laughs> you get it? <laughs> because, you know, because the planet that Sang Healy's are, it's Sang Healy, oh, son of a bitch. Unfortunately, we didn't have any fresh ungoy teats to suckle on on this planet, so we would have to kill some snow hares for breakfast. As we were making ourselves a nice bunny rabbit sandwich, we kind of figured that maybe it'd be nice to have some clothes so we didn't freeze our Sangheili balls off. Jesus Christ, I really can't think of any Sangheili jokes, can I? Anyhow though, we began hunting down some caribou for their leather and their meat. After killing about four of the animals, we managed to string together their flesh to make some clothing. And if I do say so myself, I think Commander X Commander Wart Wart looks pretty damn dapper. Things were honestly going quite well for us on this new planet. We had all the bunny rabbit sandwiches that we could want. We had a nice little warm cabin. But unfortunately, it would appear that our drop pod had been detected by the local Forerunner faction. It would appear that they had sent a Forerunner Huntress to investigate this signal. The Commander was a tiny a bit concerned seeing how the Huntress was a little bit more equipped than him, but Wart Wart is not one to back down from a fight. Besides, tainted or not, that gear would be perfect for us. And I mean, how hard could it be? All we had to do was peel it off of her cold, dead carcass. Well, it may surprise you to know it was actually quite difficult. It took a very long time, but we did manage to kill the Forerunner Huntress, and we had her armor intact without it becoming tainted. Now, you may be saying to yourself, why did you kill the Forerunner, though, Rat Knight? Because look at Wart Wart's sweet new drip. Oh. 
<laughs> no, I, I'm just kidding. I, I don't know why. I, I guess I, I didn't think about it or something. Or because I didn't want to recruit one of our false gods. Regardless though, we decided to travel to a local heretic faction base to do a bit of trading with them as well as introduce ourselves. Lucky enough for us, they were so interested in purchasing the Forerunner helmet that we had, they actually sold us two ex-Covenant slaves. Now this was no army by far, but it was a decent start. However, after after some time had passed, it would appear that the Covenant had caught wind of our upcoming uprising. Though we were the same species, these elites saw us as the enemy, and we saw them as walking weapons and armor for the taking. Thankfully though, we were able to take one of the elites down, causing the other one to flee. We tried to chase her down as well, but she was a bit too fast and she got away. We would be able to strip the larger elite of his weapons and armor though, which was perfect. We didn't want to dress like the Covenant, but it was good protection. And in the meantime, we were going to try to convince this big fella to be our friend and that his entire religion and way of thinking is completely wrong but also that we're very nice and kind and sweet we continue fine-tuning our relationship as well as trading with the local heretic faction they were basically our only and closest friend seeing how the humans hated us still but to be fair we also very much despise them as well ah uh, who needs them anyway the damn four foot meat bags they're uh, uh, worthless except for the chief of course now that's a real man now some time later our heretic pals had mentioned a covenant outpost nearby our base this must be where all the raids are coming from. So we decided to embark out to try and attack the outpost. Wart Wart thought that this may be the perfect opportunity to enact his revenge upon the Covenant. However, the outpost was much more heavily guarded than we had anticipated. We expected all of their soldiers to be minor elites, but there were 12 soldiers total, most of them being minor, but they actually had an ultra as well as a major. Not only that, but they were also quite heavily armed. We began to second guess ourselves. Maybe we shouldn't try to attack this outpost with just four of us maybe we should wait wait a minute it's that orange torturer son of a bitch from the ship oh you better bet your ass we're going to attack this outpost commander wart wart led his small squad of saint healy against the covenant outpost the battle plan for attacking the outpost was hopefully to be able to split up their soldiers into groups that way the four of us could attack them one at a time essentially picking them off one by one however unfortunately quite the opposite happened instead of splitting their troops up into smaller groups they managed to divide us into to two separate groups. Unfortunately, Commander Wartwart -Wart and Dag were the only two left standing, but even they would not be able to hold out for much longer. We were running out of plasma, and we were also running out of time. As bad as I hate to admit it, the Covenant had us pinned in a corner. Those damn, dirty, diabolical, hinge-jawed bastards. But we would not give up. We would continue fighting until our very last breath. And for them to take that very last breath, they would have to rip it from us. And though we did continue fighting off the Covenant, bravely standing side by side throughout the battle, eventually Dap fell. Oh, sorry, apparently her name was Dag. Either way, she was very important to us. Regardless though, now the battle solely rested on the shoulders of Commander Wartwart, -Wart, and thank God he eventually won. I'm completely joking, of course. No, we definitely died. We were extremely outmatched. I have no idea what we were thinking. We should have retreated, but I guess Commander Wartwart -Wart seen the orange torturer guy and he got a little head over heels. Oh well, at least we managed to take as many of them as we could to hell with us. Yep, you guessed it. That's me again. You know, we really need to stop meeting like this, don't we? Look, I know what you're thinking. I'm pretty banged up this time around, but it's going to be fine. The nice purple doctors said they're going to take good care of me. And they seem trustworthy. And oh boy, did they fix me up. They gave me brand new armor as well as bionics made from their own technology. A brand new sword. I was once broken but they made me new. They made me into a killing machine.
The big purple man in the suit from space made a deal with me. He would save my life and give me the tools that I needed to destroy the Covenant on this planet, and in exchange, I would help him take care of a little pest problem he was having. Accepting that deal was a no-brainer, and after landing on the planet, I immediately made my way to a nearby Covenant fortress. It was time for me to wreak havoc on this death cult and enact my revenge once and for all. This fortress was actually one of the main Covenant bases on this planet, and thus it was heavily guarded, of course. All of the soldiers, of course, had very heavy shields as well as weapons, but they wouldn't even come close to being able to stop me, not with my new armor as well as my new body. Just as well as my new and improved needlers upgraded by Void Tech, they've been able to make quite a few improvements to the Covenant technology. Within the blink of an eye, my rampage began. I immediately began raining down hellfire of needles upon every single elite I found. And though many of them tried to flee and hide, none of them were safe. For there would be no great journey for these fools, only my wrath. The remaining soldiers mustered up the courage to try and surround me and attack me all at once. It wasn't a bad plan on their part but it didn't work. And after hours of fighting, I was trying to step over their limp and lifeless bodies to fire at their comrades. And after it was all said and done, this base had finally been destroyed. Now, of course, there were still quite a few to go, but we would need to begin healing ourselves, and it looks like all of those energy sword attacks did manage to take down our armor, so we'll need to get some new armor. Lucky for us, though, with the infinite voids resources, it shouldn't take much for us to be able to repair it. Or maybe we could take some from the corpses of these fallen cultist fools. Lucky Luckily, we didn't have to strip any corpses for armor, as Void sent us some new, and just as well, they also sent us some very new and powerful blasters. The plasma that comes from these blasters is much hotter and much more powerful, just as well, they are much more rapid in their fire rate. And I think that they are absolutely perfect. Wart Wart here will be able to do plenty of damage to the Covenant fools with these. However, before we continue fighting the Covenant, it's time that we paid humanity a little visit. Luckily, Void was already at war with the UNSC as well. Well, so it was the perfect storm. This too was also one of humanity's largest fortresses on the planet. It is also possible that the demon were hiding here as well. As we approached the fortress, the humans immediately began firing their mortars at us. But unfortunately for them, they were extremely inaccurate, and thus they could not stop what was to come. Wart Wart was ready for anything that the humans could throw at him, including the demon. He was very confident in his new abilities. We approached the outskirts of the fortress, and a firefight immediately began between us, the ODSTs, and the Marines. They even had a few Spartans among them as well. <laughs> Oh, how cute. That's so sweet. Wart Wart easily tanked any firepower that they threw at him. Bullets, rockets, anything. This battle was a bloody massacre. Humanity was leagues behind the Covenant, and even they stood no chance. This was more of a warm-up for the armies of the Covenant. But there was still no sign of the demon. And then all at once, there he was. We had spotted him. We immediately blew the doors off the structure and engaged in a firefight with him. Things would be different this time, Chief. Your army was destroyed and now it's just you and me. The Master Chief was much more resilient than Ward Ward had thought. Even given his legendary reputation among the Covenant forces, this is not what we were expecting. Even with the newfound strength and power from our Void Tech equipment and body, the Chief was still a strenuous match. But in the end, we did some somehow managed to best him. We hadn't killed him though, or even severely injured him. We had only managed to damage his suit, causing it to lock. At this time, Wart Wart was considering killing the chief, but he began to think he was just a soldier doing his duty, and besides, are they even enemies at this point anymore? But before he could make a decision, some Void Tech associates approached, captured the Master Chief, as they said that they had plans for him. They said that the remaining Covenant armies were gathering together not too far from this location, so they were going to provide us with a new weapon to use against them. It was a Covenant fuel rod cannon that had been heavily upgraded and modified by Void technology. And with this, the Covenant stood no chance against us. We continued our journey north, where we would then encounter the full might of the remaining Covenant forces of this planet. It would appear as a last ditch effort to try and stop us, they were going to throw every single person that they had at us. They had so many soldiers of so many different classes, wielding different weapons and equipped with different armors, but none 
nonetheless, this would not matter. For the infinite, endless void has swallowed the great journey whole, and the Covenant will not be far behind. As their pathetic, worthless armies approached, we immediately began raining down fire on them with our new fuel rod cannon. They seemed quite shocked by just how destructive this was and just how powerful we were. After a while of killing several of their units, one large group of them attempted to flee. Another group approached and they called in the big guns. With their number of units rapidly depleting, they called in a corvette for a glassing. Unfortunately for them though, even this last pathetic, pitiful attempt to try and kill us would not work. Even something as powerful as a corvette's glassing beam could not stop Wartward. For he was now the bane of the covenant, and after the glassing beam had ended, he continued his rampage with his burnt armor and body. At one point he was even dual wielding his energy sword as well as one of the fallen elite's energy swords, which I thought was pretty badass. There was nowhere they could run, there was nowhere they could hide hide, Wart Wart was coming. What few remaining Covenant soldiers that had not died in this incredible battle tried to flee. Unfortunately, of course, we couldn't allow that to happen, so we whipped out the fuel rod cannon and went to work. Wart Wart finally achieved the revenge that he had so longed for when fighting the Covenant previously. All thanks to Void, we were forever indebted to them and what they had given us. Of course, the Covenant has not been defeated in the universe simply on this planet. There were plenty of other planets that needed cleansing. And oh boy, was Wart Wart more than ready to cleanse every single planet in the universe of the Covenant Scum. However, he is a man of his word, of course. And since our Void Overlords gave us this amazing body, this armor, and this awesome energy sword, as well as our revenge, we owe it to them. It was time that we took care of their little pest problem for them. How's it hanging, folks? We are back playing as the bane of Void's existence. Yes, I am once again talking about Napoleon and his clone army. After last episode, the lads needed Nay. They deserved a little bit of comfort. So we allowed them some time to relax between all the Void destroying, to have some steak dinners, as well as share a few brewskis together. Ah... Uh relaxation. All right, that's enough of that. Get your ass back to work. One of the first things we're focusing on once again today is our defenses, so we're building some more turrets as well as sandbags and barricades to go around them. However, with that being said, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. You see those security fences? Yeah, those. Well, I didn't know it at the time, but apparently you can't shoot over those, so uh, we ended up figuring that out later on. Whoopsie daisy. On the bright side, though, we ended up having a trade ship passing by the planet who just so happened to be a bolt. Good trader, and you know what that means. Yes, that is correct. Cloth. Thank God we don't have to wait on our cotton plants to grow. We can just buy it. And buy it we did. Every last bit of it. We also ended up buying what little bit of plasteel that they had as well. Every little bit counts. Especially since it's so critical to our fusion bomb production, which is basically the only viable weapon we have to take down Void constantly. Thankfully now as well that we have enough cloth, we'll be able to deconstruct our old ships and use those resources as well as the cloth to build our new new LAAT troop transport ships, which admittedly is going to take a very long time to build all three of them because they take a smorgasbord of resources. But eventually, after a while, we did manage to get our very first one done. And I gotta say, it's actually beautiful. I really like the textures on it and I can't wait to drop some bombs out of it and kill all of those filthy, dirty, void bastards. Huh. Well, speak of the devil. It would appear that the Federation has either been absorbed by Void or signed some kind of agreement with them. Uh, I suppose it was inevitable that our enemies would come together after all the ass spankings that we've delivered to them both. They had some very odd looking creatures among them, humanoid in nature, that our Spartan Taylor actually described as saying Healy. Regardless of whatever these creatures were, wherever the hell they came from, we were about to turn them all into dust and rubble. Dust and rubble? That 
didn't make any... Uh, whatever, you know what I mean. We're gonna kill all these Federation void bastards just like we always do, baby. The first group to come and fall to the might of our clone army was the Void Associates as they were the fastest in the entire group. Next up came the rest of the Federation soldiers along with the Sangheili who appeared to be leading the charge. They were much different than your average Federation soldiers. They were much more resilient to our blasters. But nonetheless, they fell all the same as their Federation comrades. We have yet to meet a foe who could stand up to our might. And I highly doubt we're going to meet one today. Foreshadowing. Napoleon and his men stood firm against our enemy until they were no more. But that was about the time that three large void raids were dropping in right on top of us. The one group literally landed right on top of us and then the other two groups seemed to land in our base. Thankfully the majority of our troops were already pretty close together on the battlefield so it was fairly easy to dispatch of the void soldiers as well as their monstrosities. The other groups of void soldiers that have landed within our base couldn't find any of our clones to try and kill so I suppose they decided to steal anything they could and run away. But you know we couldn't just allow that to happen, so we had to engage in a firefight with them. Unfortunately though, at the end of this, Napoleon was fairly injured. It would appear though that his injuries were caused due to his armor breaking during combat, most likely from all the plasma blasts from the St. Healy. Speaking of which, we also decided that we would take one of them prisoner to try and interrogate them or possibly enslave them to clean our boots. You know, just whichever came first. I do have some good news though, it would appear that our solar flare shield does work against void so any solar flares that they can actually cause is basically useless when we have the shield operating which also means that our turrets and other defenses are actually going to be useful against them now speaking of which it was about this time when i was actually playing that i realized you can't shoot over the high security fencing so we began deconstructing all of that around our turrets thankfully we didn't really need them during that raid anyhow as we had our full army here but if we did we would have been screwed it's also worth mentioning that I forgot Void Associates come back to life after they die on occasion, so we were also dealing with that at this time, as well as the stinky shitty green air. After some time, Napoleon was finally healed up from his wounds good enough that he could walk around, so he immediately goes out to the battlefield and starts helping our clones clean up. But without his armor, the man is basically naked for God's sake. So we decided that we would make him a new set, and just as well we would also give him some remaining serums that we haven't already. Turns out there were actually quite a few that we had had here at the base that we hadn't already gave him so these should help him become a true monstrosity of a killing machine and of course as is tradition with Napoleon we would let him make his very own armor and as you can imagine he normally sticks with about one or two colors yeah although I suppose if anyone could pull off the intimidating menacing black and red look it would be Napoleon now with that being said I also decided that we should probably upgrade some of our clones we should give them some of these serums as well as some better armor we have so many resources as well as the serums and void tech limbs that we should start experimenting a little bit and that is why today my friends I introduce to you a new clone class in our army the elite clone soldier now of course as mentioned this is simply a new class there's not too much of a difference between them and the normal soldiers except for the fact that the elite soldiers are basically roided up killing machines but listen look nobody's perfect I mean who hasn't taken a few performance answers in their days maybe to make their muscles bigger or their fur softer in the meantime though we did manage to recruit that hinge head son of a bitch that was trying to kill us a few days ago apparently in his culture it's an honor to wear his armor so we made him strip down to his skivvies that way we could make sure he wasn't hiding anything in his funny bits and after all this time all this time of killing void and the federation and you know checking out the saying healy's funny bits and whatnot a bit more than we should we finally ended up completing all three of of our LAAT troop transport ships and god does it feel good to finally have these ships back I cannot wait to take them out on some raiding missions and I can't make up my mind who we should raid first the filthy UNSC or those damn dirty federation bastards and their new hinge pals or maybe we'll pay a little visit to void for orchestrating the entire thing uh oh looks like we're gonna have to put that on the back burner for just a moment as we have a man hunting pack of beautiful women hmm don't mind if I do I'm joking of course 
They're probably married anyway. Although this was a spectacular battle lit up with bombs being dropped on top of Void as we normally do, it was still a good chance to see how our elite clone soldiers done in battle and might I just say that they actually excelled on the battlefield against these abominations or whatever they are. Oh, would you look at that, these beasts left behind quite the snail trail. <laughs> Uh, what is this? The Federation needing their ass kicked once again already. Very well, we'd be more than happy to oblige, I suppose. Let's see what they have here. Peacemakers, peace bringers, void soldiers. Uh, nothing too special. Huh. Something about this guy seems familiar. Online. And so it begins, a battle of epic proportions. Commander Wartwart and his new Federation Void Task Force began assaulting our base. What few turrets we actually had operational stood absolutely no chance against the raiding party. Wartwart and his soldiers moved like lightning. Napoleon and our clone army would stand their ground though. No matter how dangerous they seemed, we would not back down. Besides, they could be the competition that we have longed for for so long. But only time would tell if this battle was even worth our time. Our men stood firm, shoulder to shoulder on the battlefield. Brothers in arms. The battle raged on for hours. Wartwort -wart was still barely touched and he had many men left. All at once he and his Saint Healy made an offensive push through our front lines. During the process, many of our brothers were gravely wounded and we had to make a strategic retreat. We found footing in a new position and began firing at his army once again. However, Napoleon was determined to hunt down Wartwort -wart on his own. We found Wartwort -wart attempting to flank our soldiers from the side, so Napoleon came up and started blasting him. We also began attempting to move our soldiers in closer after finding him so that we could give him all the firepower we had. Luckily, our elite clone soldiers came to Napoleon's rescue as he was attacked by several Sanghealy. Napoleon managed to corner Wartwort. -wart. The two of them began to engage in a sword fight. Wartwort -wart proved to be a worthy adversary, but luckily our clone soldiers had surrounded him as well and began firing on him. All at once, his armor broke and he dropped to the ground, and we had finally defeated Commander Wartwort. -wart. The battle had finally ended and we were victorious, but we paid a heavy toll. Not only did several of our clone brothers die during the battle, but also many of them were actually kidnapped by the Void Federation task force as well. This was truly a dark day. But fret not, my friends. We would make them pay every last one of them. But before we could enact any revenge on Void, we had a lot of work to do. We had many of our brothers to rescue, and we have plenty of healing to do as well. We also have a lot of corpses to clean up from just outside of our base, and plenty of members who were gravely injured who still needed a good sword through the old throat. Not that we really mind obliging them with that, these stupid pieces of dog shit. Anyhow though, Wartwort, -wart, even just the short amount of time after the battle, appeared to be fully healed from his wounds. This given with his astounding resilience and combat skills, we assume that he must have plenty of modifications made by Void. But before we check out Wart Wart's modifications, we have plenty of healing to do as mentioned before. Many of our brothers are bleeding out in their rooms. And just as well, we also need to begin cleaning up our battlefield around the base to ensure the enemies are not able to pick up weapons, and we also need to remove these corpses before they begin stinking and rotting and getting all of our clones sick. But speaking of corpses, we would also need to bear our remaining brothers from the battlefield as well. The battle may be over, but not all returned home. Rest in peace, my little loves. But now with all that done, we can finally examine Wart Wart's exquisite body- <clears throat> I mean his modifications. Let's see, zombie-like control, machine-like reflexes and combat skills. Aha, there it is. A Void Tech AI controlling him, no doubt. Ah uh, yes, that'll do the trick. Now we need to get that little bugger out of his head. It's kind of like Cortana from the Halo series, except, um, purple? And also evil. Anyhow though, let's dig that little booger right 
right out of his head. That should fix him right up. Ah, now that is much better. Now it's going to take quite some time though for the AI effects to really wear off, so we're going to try to convince him that we're not horrible monsters. Well, at least that Void is a much more horrible monster than we are. I mean, we did try to take over the world in episode 2, but we won't talk about that. At this point, we basically just focused on rebuilding after the battle. Some of our defenses, as well as our homes, were severely damaged, so we were working on those. Of course, though, we are union workers, technically, so we had mandatory chest breaks every 30 to 45 minutes. And boy, I'll tell you, it really keeps the mind sharp. Well, that, uh, that kind of sounded a little aggressive. Uh, moving on, though, I decided to build a new type of turret, and we had one Persona Core, and it required one Persona Core, so I thought, well, this must be great. It didn't exactly look great. It's a giant naval cannon. I guess we'll see how it does. It's worth mentioning as well, since Void has taken over the Federation Task Force, and we're getting more raids from this task force, we're also getting plenty of our delicious meat bots. And honestly, it's pretty crazy because we have so much of it that we don't have near enough space and I'm going to have to expand our freezer. But that's okay, we don't mind. Now that we finally cleared off our brethren as well as the good corpses that we can eat from the battlefield, for the most part, it's time that we deal with the other corpses. And of course, the best way to deal with corpses in RimWorld is with some good old fashioned napalm burning, burning fire, baby. So that's exactly what we did. We lit the entire massive corpse pile on fire. And then we kicked back and watched it burn. Shame we don't have any marshmallows. <laughs> or any, uh, <laughs> any weenies, am I right? <laughs> no, but this is serious. The smoldering corpses of our enemies filled the night sky with light, just as well with a disgusting putrid stench. We have no idea what they feed these disgusting void associates, but whatever it is, it sure makes them smell when we burn them. Maybe it's possible they shit themselves during battle when they saw Napoleon and his army. Speaking of which, after plenty of time to heal as well as clean up the base and make sure that we are still well defended, it was finally time for us to enact our revenge. One of the capital cities of the Void Federation Task Force wasn't too far from our base, which turned out to be perfect. That way we wouldn't have to waste much fuel before we bomb the ever-loving shit out of them. I won't lie though, I wasn't anticipating such a large city because the powerful faction bases mod was actually turned up fairly high, so unfortunately we only brought three nuclear bombs. Still enough to do a whole heck of a lot of damage to the base, but there were still plenty of their soldiers left. It was quite alright, though given the circumstances, I suppose we could be inclined to get out of our ship and start kicking some ass on the ground. To which, naturally, of course, you know that we definitely did. Turns out, without good old Commander Wart Wart leading them, the Federation Task Force was nothing but a former shell of itself. Surprisingly, in my opinion, I would say that they were even weaker than they were before the void takeover slash absorption. And that's pretty damn weak. With our retribution firmly distributed against the Federation Task Force, we decided to relax ourselves a little bit with some nice meals and some good company from our clone brethren. But be fooled not, my friends, for the Federation Task Force was not a milestone on the way to victory. No, they were nothing more than an inconvenience. They've done nothing but slow the inevitable defeat of Void on this planet. But now their commander, good old Wart Wart, he is of interest to us. He very well may be a key part in taking down Void. But of course, only time shall tell. How's it hanging, folks? Welcome back to Daddy Rat's little love project, the Clone Army. At the moment, our clones are going about their day-to-day -day lives in our massive and beautiful base, but I'll tell you what, we are missing something. 
resources. We are missing a lot of resources. In today's episode, I hope to turn our base into a very well defended fortress of sorts, so we're going to need plenty of resources to go about doing that. And when we're low on steel and plasteel, we always turn to our good friends Void. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're immediately going to begin a raid. Normally, we don't start off a video on this hot and heavy, if you will, by immediately going and attacking other bases, but what the hell. So we crammed as many of our troops into our three transport ships as possible and immediately began flying towards a nearby void base. Now this void base however would not be like any that we had saw previously. This base was inside of a mountain and was honestly a fortress in its own right. It also almost gave my computer a stroke attempting to load all this in, especially when one of our ships landed directly on top of their turrets. We didn't mind that too much though as it was just less that we would have to destroy with our weapons. Napoleon would gather all of our clone troopers to the front of the building where we would attempt to blow a hole directly into the side of the massive structure. However, some Void soldiers came out, got their asses stomped, and then we resumed our plans. We decided that we would actually test out some new technology during this battle as well. We decided to use a rocket launcher from the Rim Colonies Evolved mod, which looked really good. It wasn't as powerful as we thought it would end up being, but there was no one better to wield it than our Spartan Taylor. She did manage to use it to blow a small hole into one of the rooms of the base, but it was a very tiny room and there was no way we were cramming all of our soldiers in there, so we began shooting holes into their walls to look for a better opening. We eventually made an opening into their hallways as well as their dining room, which was perfect, and also because this base was basically laid out the same as our very own, we knew exactly where to go. However, oddly enough, we met very little resistance in this mega base. We had fought the soldiers that came out at us in the very beginning, but there weren't many more. There were many mutants in hibernation, but that was about it. Now I say that, but of course the mutants are extremely powerful and strong in their own right, but through the power of fire and a little bit of radical blaster fire, we managed to cleanse this base of them. Naturally, with all the mutant and void forces defeated, there was but one thing left for us to do here. That's right, the one thing we actually came for, the resources. And let me tell you, they had plenty of them. Just what we were looking for. Plenty of uranium, plenty of plasteel, even a little bit of fuel for our ships. It's almost like we told Void we need gas money, they said no, and then we pointed a gun at them. Or, you know, something like that. Anyway though, after we loaded up all the nice resources, we ended up leaving and then returning home. We were quite pleased with the bounty of plasteel and whatnot that we had acquired through means of raiding Void and with no casualties as well, thankfully. We immediately had our army begin hauling it all into our warehouse, where then Napoleon would actually begin production on more nuclear warheads. And look, I know I'm kind of beating a dead horse by saying this, but our nuclear arsenal is still our most effective weapon against Void. For now, that is. But with our raids against Void finished for the time being, I decided that it's truly time for us to turn this base into a fortress. We had a massive stockpile of faux rum, the really durable material that the Federation uses, so we decided that we would actually use this as an outer coating for our base along the sides of the plasteel walls we already have. We're essentially turning the base into a massive turtle, a huge hardened shell that we can run back in to and hide if need be or fight the enemy within our courtyard. Now, I know what you're thinking, Rat Knight, why do you even care? You're raiding Void, you are the aggressor here, you're able to take them on, but think about this, in the last few episodes the Void raids have gotten more frequent, they've also gotten much more powerful with multiple raids at once, which also means that we get multiple solar flares as well as fallouts. Now these defenses currently are far from ideal, with us having to use many simple turrets just because of limited resources. At at some point throughout this episode, we're going to have to go on another raid. But at least for the time being, these turrets are going to help us out quite a bit, and the base is truly becoming something of a fortress with them. We attempted to build one or two at least of these turret pillbox type designs around each side of the base, that way we can ensure that we are defended from all sides as well. However, as I'm sure we all know, Void always comes in from drop pods from above, so we also began working on a lot of anti-air 
defenses as well. And don't forget that last episode or the episode before, we actually built a solar flare shield which will prevent Void from taking our defenses offline. But finally, after all this time, we would finally be able to achieve our greatest defense yet. Napoleon had a pretty productive conversation with Wartwart and the two commanders decided that Wartwart would join our clone army. Now you might think calling Wartwart our greatest defense yet is a bit of an overstatement, but let me remind you that it took Napoleon and the full force of our army to take him down, all on his own. Wartwart is a true powerhouse and he may just be the key to winning this war. But he's not going to do us much good if he's bleeding out on the ground after getting shot a few times, so we're going to have to make him some brand new armor. Napoleon worked on a brand new design for Wartwart's armor, something with a color scheme that would fit our clones, but would also take Wartwart back to his commander days in the Covenant forces. Basically what I'm getting at is it's some white looking space armor, just, you know, like he had before and what the clones were basically. However, it is much more durable than the armor that our clones are currently wearing. Of course, we would allow Wartwart to equip his old glory, the good old red plasma rifles. And we have finally arrived at our destination, people. Since I love you and your opinions ever so much in the comments section, I have given you what you've asked for, a clone army and Wartwart team up. Whoa, 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 no, this isn't an episode. We're not even at the seven minute mark yet. You can't end it here. We need to see what these sons of bitches can do. Pump the brakes a little bit and let's get back to the video. But uh, hey, while I got you here, you should really support me on Patreon because our patrons make this video as well as all videos on this channel possible. And they have a little bit extra of my love. All right, that's all I'm gonna say. You get, let's get back to the video. For a demonstration of the power of Napoleon and Wartwart -Wart combined on their own, as well as a few of our nuclear bombs, I decided to let the two of them, yes, just the two of them, not our army at all, the two of them go on a raid against Void with nuclear bombs. To me, this was a very risky move since Napoleon and Wartwart are two most powerful characters, so the bombs were there as a bit of a fail-safe if Void starts to get the better of us. However, I do really like to blow shit up, and so we decided to bomb them first anyhow. I, you know, it's a beautiful light show, and it's going to really weaken their forces, so we could just walk in and take what we want. Besides, who cares? Void doesn't fight fair when they raid us. They use solar flares and a toxic fallout. So what if we use a few fusion bombs? We cracked open their base like it was a piece of hard candy that our Nana gave us on Christmas Eve. Wow, that's a really irrational thought. Anyhow, we went right in and started killing everything in sight. Now, I will be honest with you, the mutants gave us a little bit of a run for our money. We didn't really get too injured, but I was getting scared that if enough of them piled on us at once, we may end up getting killed or injured. But thankfully, that never happened. I was pretty prompt with my response responses and moving Wartward -Ward and Napoleon out of the way because all the mutants could really do is chase us. And at the end of the day, we stood atop their corpse as a mound of bodies as best buddies, new friends, the two commanders of the clone army. But naturally, this little buddies trip had to come to an end and we had to get those sweet, succulent resources that we came here for in the first place. And of course, we did find them and we began packing them into our ship and it took a very long time, of course. But once we had finally got everything packed, by the next morning, we began heading back home where we would unload these resources for our army to carry into the warehouse. Naturally, of course, you already know that a good portion of these resources resources are going to be put into our nuclear arsenal, but once again, we are turning this place into a fortress, so we are also going to be using it for many, many more turrets. And we have finally achieved a massive fortress, a well-defended turtle that we can all live within. And while I say all of us can live within it, I do mean all of us, including Wartward. -Ward. He has truly proven himself in battle today. The two new commanders of the clone army are righteous and powerful, and Wartward -Ward has been redeemed.
Hello everyone, how is it hanging? And welcome back to our ninth episode of the Clone Army series. As per usual, today's episode is going to be chock full of excitement, glory, and most importantly, violence. Yeah, we're gonna kill a lot of people, you know how it goes. But first, before any murder sprees can occur, we have a lot of weapons in our warehouse. Now, of course, we obtain these by killing plenty of Void, Federation soldiers, etc, etc, but we do need to clear these out and also make a little bit of silver for more resources. So we've decided to try and sell all of them. Unfortunately though, we don't have any orbital traders at the moment. We're going to have to try and load them all up into our ships and fly them out to the Outlanders who of course will purchase them. Now I'm not going to lie to you, it took an absolutely awful amount of time to get all these weapons loaded up because we just had so damn many of them, but we did finally get that done and immediately flew off to some nearby settlements to sell them. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe we ended up flying to two or three settlements, something around there. It was quite a few, just mostly because they didn't have enough silver to purchase all of them, and also we were looking for uranium and plasteel, which we ended up buying as much as they had. We also bought some steel to keep us from having to mine it or raid any mining operations or anything like that. We also bought fuel and some other things as well. And yes, I know I've said it a thousand times, obviously the reason we need more and more and more resources is to help fuel our production of nuclear weapons as as well as just using them for defenses around the base like turrets. Look, what can I say? It's a never-ending cycle, okay? One of the more notable things that we actually ended up buying was a Persona Core. Now, this is going to be used for our large naval cannon turret thing. We had built one previously, so I decided that I'd buy one and build another. And yes, as you might imagine, it does require a Persona Core as well as a smorgasbord of the other resources that luckily we ended up purchasing. We can only hope that it comes in handy when Void tries to spank our little clone asses again. Speaking of which, tensions appear to be high between our clone soldiers. We had a few mental breaks here and there, and some of them were beginning social fights, unfortunately. But that's not really relevant to the story, I just kind of thought it might be interesting. Despite a few scuffles between our soldiers, things were honestly going really well. We were doing amazing, and I didn't think anything was really going to go wrong. Ah, uh, yes. Almost as if on cue. We have six of the largest possible Void Rage dropping in right on top of us. Ah, we love it. Napoleon and Wart Wart called all of our soldiers out into the center of our base to engage the Void forces as they opened their pods. Thankfully, our anti-air guns had taken down some of the pods after they had fallen, and we began firing upon the enemies that were left. Now, you will notice that there is still power going on for our defenses, which is wonderful, but Unfortunately, at some point during this battle, something happened and we ended up losing power and our defenses fell. Lucky for us though, before that could end up happening, we did take out the majority of the Void's mutants as well as their soldiers and whatnot as well. Now speaking of their soldiers, many of their undying soldiers continued coming back to life after we would stomp them out. Now of course this is an issue that we've been familiar with before, this happens all the time, but with how many raids we're getting at one time now, this is actually becoming quite the big issue, and we don't really have a good way of disposing with these bodies all at once. Uh, our flamethrowers may burn them, but that will take a very long time. So we came up with a solution, the same solution we always use when it comes to void, nuclear bombs. Turns out the best way to dispose of the corpses is with a big nuclear bomb right in the middle of the body pile. Void soldiers can't come back to life if there's nothing left. Now with our little resurrecting bodies issue over with, we kind of need to tackle the problem of why the hell our power ended up going out, even though our solar flare shield is still operational. My guess was down to two things. Most likely, the power conduit that it was connected to ended up getting destroyed, and then it went out, and then there was no way to get it back online due to the solar flare. And also, I was thinking maybe because there's several raids, maybe we need several magnetic shields to prevent the flare, so I ended up building a bunch more. But issues like this, of course, are expected when you're dealing with such a catastrophic force like Void. Now, our defenses even being online can't really do too much more. We always depend on our army as our sole source of defense. Now don't get me wrong, the turrets are great in their own right. They're just not near as powerful as our soldiers. Now we have been losing quite a few in prior episodes and I kind of blame myself for that. Of course for multiple reasons, but one of the biggest reasons to me is we definitely need to make some upgrades in our armor and weapons. So I decided that we would begin doing so with our heavy clone class, mostly because 
it's going to take much less time than the majority of our forces and also because they're just in a desperate need for an upgrade. Their numbers have dwindled significantly in the last few episodes. And so that we don't have to download any newer mods, I love newer mods, but I'd like to play around with some of the ones we currently have, I decided to go with the Purge Trooper armor for them. Now of course if you watch previous episodes you're probably familiar with it as it is the armor that Napoleon had before his current attire. Now the Purge Trooper armor is slightly different than Napoleon's commander armor but it is still extremely resilient, very flexible, and also extremely badass and intimidating. I can only imagine the fear in Void's eyes as these heavy class elite soldiers creep up on them in the dead of night. But you know I thought that we were missing something here. Maybe we were missing a little touch from good old Wart Wart. So we decided that we would equip these soldiers with some plasma grenades. That is right, a little bit of Covenant technology along with our clone armor and weaponry. Besides, these grenades would be perfect for a heavy class. All they've been packing around so far are rifles and their vibro swords. Of course though, before we carry these grenades into battle, we'll need to test them out on a target. Aha! An innocent sleeping animal! Perfect. Our first volley of grenades onto the giant powerful beast ended up crippling it and it couldn't move anymore. Our second volley, however, would teleport the beast- oh, oh no, that's not teleporting. No, we vaporized it. Then, for whatever reason, I decided to make them throw their grenades at this little small hill. I don't know what I was expecting here, but it <laughs> really didn't do much damage. I, I guess it's a good demonstration, though. Now that our heavy class was actually all geared up and ready, we would leave them behind to defend the base, and we would take our elite class as well as Napoleon and Wart Wart to raid a local void fortress. Now, we didn't have many soldiers along with us, but we did take all three ships, and the reason for that is because the less soldiers and the more ships, the more room we have for resources to carry home. Now, as each of our ships ended up arriving at the base, we had another of those really strange loading glitches. I don't know if it has something to do with the fog at the base or what, but as our ships began to land, it despawned some of the walls and whatnot at the Void Fortress. I, I don't know. It was a little bit upsetting, though, because obviously Void doesn't stand any chance against us, but I like to give them some false hope. Our soldiers ended up regrouping with Ward Ward and Napoleon after landing though and we immediately all began bearing down upon the Void Fortress, destroying their turrets as well as their soldiers that came out to try and stop us. But you know what, you've seen this a thousand times if you watched the previous episode, so instead of watching this I'm going to show you a meme that I made. <laughs> Isn't it funny? Ah, would you look at that, just in the nick of time. The base has been destroyed, technically it was already destroyed with the loading glitch, but that's quite alright, we have all of these new resources. I gotta say, everyone was pretty darn tickled, we had some more Void Soldier blood on our hands, dead mutants that have been cleansed from the planet, and all the steel and all that that we could ever hope for once again. We of course returned home, unloaded all of the beautiful resources from our ships, and began carrying all of it in, but, you know, I began thinking to myself, we just upgraded the heavy class, yet we didn't decide to use them on that raid for some reason, and we should really test them out this episode. But unfortunately, before we even had the chance to prepare for another raid, we had a rebirth chamber, and it was falling from the sky next to our base. It would appear that Void is becoming desperate. Not only are they trying to raid us more frequently with their own soldiers and whatnot, but they're also shooting these massive rebirth chambers near our base with black titans inside. Of course, so we easily defeated the Black Titan. <laughs> oh void, is that all you have for me? Oh. Well, apparently not. We ended up having eight of these massive rebirth chambers fall from the sky near our base, all containing these black titans. Some burst forth from their chambers trying to attack us preemptively, and others stayed inside and we attacked them first. As soon as the pods busted, we decided to shoot them down, of course. And though, of course, this was a very dangerous and tedious task, we did manage to kill all of the black titans that had fallen near our base. With this massive void retaliation over with, though, it was fine. Finally time for us to retaliate against them once again. This time around we would send our heavy class led by Commander Wart Wart. The base was nothing too special, more of the same of course, except this fortress appeared to have many more living void soldiers within. Living void soldiers? Oh, we'll fix that little problem. 
With several nuclear bombs dropped upon their filthy little heads, the base was pretty well emptied out. Of course though, we would still have the opportunity to test out our new heavy classes armor and weaponry. The first to feel the wrath of our holy hand grenades were the void turrets just outside the entrance of their base, and then we would move on to the turrets within. Truly what we're trying to get to is the nougaty center known as the mutants. Once we had finally moved in and found all the mutants, we cleansed them with blaster power as well as our holy hand grenades of course, and then once we were finished with them, we went on to find their resources. In a previous episode, I said that the fortresses do not have any resources. They do, it's just a very small amount. I think in that episode, I had accidentally destroyed them with nuclear bombs. After returning home, Wart Wart celebrated a successful mission with an ice-cold, blood-stained brewski, and just as well, so did our heavy class troopers with some nice red wine. You know, we've really become a powerhouse on this planet, truly the powerhouse of the planet as all the other factions are so much weaker and smaller, and just as well, Void is dwindling. As it stands on the entire planet, after all these episodes of fighting them, trying to exterminate them, they only have four bases left. We are so extremely, incredibly close to our goal of eradicating Void. But that goal is still going to require a good bit more time, as well as a shit ton of manpower. Hello folks, how's it hanging? It's your rad daddy here, returning to you with episode 10 of our Clone Army series. During this episode, we are still going to be continuing our glorious campaign against Void. However, there is something that everyone has continued to bring to my attention, and I feel that we should address it. Cloning! Yes, that is right, you guys have been telling me for God knows how long, and today we are finally going to be using a mod to actually clone more soldiers. The mod that we will be using for this is clones 1.4. I know there's some other good mods I could use, but I don't know, this is the first I saw and I went with it. After researching the technology, we ended up building 11 growth vats for our little clone babies to grow in, yeah! Which was perfect because all of our clones were male and so they don't really have any lady parts to grow any babies in and yeah, you get it. Ah, uh, a big metal and glass uterus, just like Ma used to have. Wait a minute, what? Never mind, no time to explain. We have DNA to harvest from our kids Kid Heavy class. Now, originally, I was thinking that these new clones would be part of the Kid Heavy class, and I guess they still could be, but I was thinking of giving that class to Wart Wart as his own personal squad. So let me know what you guys think about that in the comments section. As for now, though, let us admire this little tadpole thing swimming around. Bro, you're telling me that this little piece of chewed bubblegum is gonna be a clone soldier? Ah, whatever, as long as we can shove a blaster in its hand. But you know what's better than one piece of chewed bubblegum with a blaster? 11 pieces of chewed bubblegum with blasters. Aw, here you go, little fella. You a little bit of rice to make you big and strong, yeah. All right, knock it off. This shit's getting weird. And also, it's gonna take them a long time to grow, so we have some other stuff to do. First and foremost, you've heard me preach about it for the last two or three episodes, defenses. We are going to be working on defenses. Given the theme of this series, I have added the Rimzenol Security Pack mod because I felt that the defenses included in that mod would be perfect here. So we immediately began researching into some of the those technologies, one of the first type of turrets that we would research are the Shard Century turrets, which are much better than the vanilla or vanilla-ish turrets. We would then begin research into Jotun Siege Emplacement. Now, research into these technologies are going to give us access to a massive manned cannon, which is great, but we're more interested in what's called the Barrage turrets, which is basically a big missile turret, as far as I understand. And you know how much we love using explosives against Void. We would immediately begin working on a row of the Shard century turrets on the western side of our base. However, slap dab right in the middle of building this row of turrets, we ended up getting a raid from the UNSC. <laughs> Nothing to be alarmed of, I'm sure. Oh. 
That's a big raid. It would appear that the UNSC has mustered an enormous force against us to finally try and take their revenge after all the spankings we've delivered to them. They brought ODSTs, they brought Spartans, they brought Space Marines, they brought Mechanoids, they brought everyone. And we're still gonna bust their chops, baby. They would immediately begin attacking our defenses, and I think this is a really good example of just how weak the previous defenses that I had set up were. Even against the UNSC and their smorgasbord of enemy types, the turrets were basically useless. They barely made a scratch. So you can imagine just how weak they'll be against Void. Lucky for us though, our turrets are not even our secondary line of defenses. They are the bottom line of defenses and our army is as powerful as ever. We chase the UNSC army around to the front of our base where we then engage with them there and begin killing more and more and more of their troops until they eventually fled. Ah, those poor, dumb, foolish, ugly UNSC cowards. When will they learn their lesson? Well, nothing to do now except go around and finish all of their little weak soldiers off and maybe carry a few of their bodies to the pile to be burned. Hmm, what's this? A space marine, eh? Yoink! We're gonna take that big fella home with us, enslave him, and make him our friend. Now, you may be asking why I'm enslaving him. Unfortunately, he has unwavering loyalty. But, ah, that's all right. Lucky for us, his consent is not required for our friendship. <laughs> We're bad people. Anyhow, though, with that threat neutralized, it was time for us to get back to working on our defenses. And we need them now more than ever. I think that raid truly proves that. Truly, more than anything, we would work on an abundance of the shard turrets as the cost to make them was quite a bit less than the actual bombardment turrets, although both of them are very useful. It of course would be a very long, tedious, and drawn out process though to try and replace all of the turrets that we had previously built with the new type that we've researched. Luckily though, we did not have a shortage of manpower. But after a while of working on our beautiful and wonderful defenses, we have finally enslaved Crimson the Space Marine, and he is our friend now against his will. A win is a win, baby. I'll take what I can get. As for Crimson, I think that I will actually add him on to Ward Ward's squad along with the Kid Heavy class. He'll make a wonderful deadly addition and Ward Ward can keep him in line. At one point, we had a trade ship in orbit around the planet. I don't remember exactly what kind of trader they were, but I do remember they were willing to buy all of our crucible cores from our meat bot supply, which was perfect. We also ended up buying some resources off of them. It wasn't really needed per se, but uh, what the hell, we have plenty of silver. And honestly, things were going really well for us. Things were really looking up. We had a very defended base, a beautiful, amazing base on the inside where all our clones love to live. And I'm trying to fill this clip with plenty of talking because maybe I accidentally filmed this for like an hour while I went and had lunch and came back and you know, the clip was extremely extremely long and I, I had to speed it up to over a hundred times speed or so and uh, whew, thank god it's finally over. With the monumental cleanup and defenses finally finished, it was time for us to give the UNSC a little bit of payback though. We flew out to one of their nearby strongholds with the idea that we were going to bomb the shit out of them and then piss on the ashes. However, after arriving, it would appear that someone else has already burned down this stronghold and took a massive dump on the ashes. But who could be responsible for this? I'm just just kidding, obviously. We all know that it's Void, those devilish bastards. We could see them all squirming around like worms in the stronghold from our ship above. These disgusting, squirmy, wormy little freaks make me sick. Among the filthy Void worms was one large and strong looking worm as well. No doubt some type of Void made abomination soldier, I'm sure. Oh well, it hardly matters though anyhow. They will be cleansed by our nuclear fire soon enough. We put in the callback back home and requested a carpet bombing of the area. Somehow, though, the mighty Abomination Void Soldier managed to survive our nuclear blast without a scratch. Oddly enough, the soldier would then leave the area. But Wart Wart was no fool. He knew this was not a retreat. This massive abomination was simply testing our metal, simply trying to get a taste of our real power. Wart Wart and his squad would head back home, though, in the ship and then report back to Napoleon about what had happened. In the meantime, though, while we're making more nuclear bombs and preparing for more battles, I want to take take a moment to thank our friend Adam-MZ8HB who actually recommended the retexture mod for the solar flare shields. Thank you ever so much Adam. These look wonderful. The texture on this is just amazing. And now while we're still on the topic of the solar flare shields, I also want to thank our good friend user-H 
HM1FO3LY5N, I hope that's not on your birth certificate, who also recommends that we begin generating more power because the solar flare shields actually use up a lot more when they're active compared to when they're idle. So we immediately began having our clones research into some advanced power technology, such as advanced solar panels. It took a little bit longer than expected, but eventually we did finally manage to get that researched. After which, of course, we would prioritize building at least three of those to start us off. In the future, of course, I would like to begin building more, though. Up until this point, our only form of power has been the Void Tech power cells, which are wonderful and whatnot, but their power output is only 1,000 watts, which is a lot, but compared to the advanced solar generators 3,400 watts, it's not as much, of course. For a little while, we were mostly focused on trying to make sure that we're feeding our massive army and taking care of them. However, at one point, I realized that we have so many defenses all around the outside of our base, but for the majority of our raids with Void, they always drop inside the base. So we began building some kinetic turrets on the inside of our hallways to try and better protect our army. After that was completed, we would begin another small campaign against some of the Void fortresses nearby. Well, I say nearby, but by that I mean on the other side of the continent. Ah oh, yes, yet another massive Void fortress for us to murder all the inhabitants of. Truly our favorite pastime, is it not? And would you look at that, the big purple eggplant abominations here as well. Well, guess what, Mr. Abomination? We're gonna bomb the absolute shit out of you. We're done taking it easy on Void. We're gonna drop every single nuclear bomb we can on them. We loaded up the fusion and nuclear warheads and began flying down there. You know what time it is. It's time for another bombing run. Let's do this. Dear God, even after all that, after the smoke cleared and the majority of their soldiers were dead, that big bastard was still alive somehow. Not only had he survived all of those fusion and nuclear warheads that were dropped on the base, but he had done so and made it out with only a scratch. Oh, he is truly an impressive specimen, is he not? Finally, after all this time, a worthy opponent. Such a shame though, because we're on a very tight schedule here. We love to stick around and kill you, but we have more of your friends and allies to kill. Toodaloo, our purple big friend, until we meet again. And believe you me, we will meet you again. But unfortunately, for the time being, we have yet another void base to destroy. This time around, we're all out of nuclear bombs. We're gonna use pure elbow grease. And a little bit of molten hot plasma, of course. Napoleon, Wart Wart, and all of our squad began approaching the base from the front. And as we did, the void soldiers began coming out to engage with us in battle. God, I love these battles so much. I wish I could just kind of pause and take it all in. You know, I just want to take a second and say that this has probably been one of my most favorite series that we've done on this channel. And honestly, I couldn't have done it without all you guys. All of these evil void bastards and also innocent people from other factions that we've slaughtered throughout this series, they wouldn't have died without your help. So I just want to say thank you again. I love you guys ever so much. Now, let us continue. The enormous onslaught of Void soldiers continued pouring out from the front of the base. Lucky for us though, reinforcements would arrive just in time. Our two ships landed and outpoured our army to help us in this battle. Unfortunately though, we did end up losing two of our elite kid class soldiers. Their deaths would not go in vain though. We all gathered around the base and began blowing hose directly in the front door so that we could march in, storm the castle, and take everything we wanted. However, for while our army was doing that, I realized our two dead soldiers were no longer dead, and I was actually very confused. Well, it turns out that the Neratonin-4B serum that we gave them is actually the same serum that Void has that resurrects them, apparently. So technically, we lost two of our soldiers during this battle, but technically, we didn't lose shit. And you know what? That is a win in my book. Just as well, we had all kinds of food in the Void base, and we were running a little bit low back home, so this was perfect for us. We would also
also end up finding some fuel here as well, which was perfect, except Void destroyed one of our ships, so that kind of sucked ass, but at least we have fuel when we get another one. Of course, now though, there was nothing to do but load up all the resources that we could take back home and then, well, head back home. This did take a little bit of time because we had to drop the troops off at the base, come back, get the remaining troops, and then head all the way back home once again, but we did finally manage to get that finished. But once again, as we always do, we managed to come out victorious against Void. Wardward and Napoleon would celebrate yet another victorious campaign against him by sipping on some red wine together in the cafeteria. Truly an outstanding friendship those two are forming. But my friends, we are coming to the end of the video, and I would just like to mention once again that our campaigns against Void are really paying off. At this time, there are only two remaining Void bases left on this entire planet. I really don't know how many we started out with on the planet when we added Void, but I know it was a lot more than two, so we've done a lot of work. Hello, 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 my beautiful friends, and welcome back to another Clone Army video, where we are still currently gestating and trying to grow our chewed up bubblegum babies into clone soldiers, which might I just say takes a very long time. Now, I do want to bring something up. You guys have been mentioning in the comment section about how once these clones are born, they're actually going to be basically useless and not have any skills. So today's episode is basically going to be me taking into consideration all of your concerns and wonderful feedback and trying to rectify my own mistakes or future mistakes that could have happened. Which of course, as I mentioned, I am extremely grateful for your suggestions and feedback and I really appreciate that. It means a lot to me and it helps us out a lot. Now with that being said, to get us started today, we're actually going to do a bit of trading with our Outlander compadres. Now of course, this is not your usual trading with the Outlanders. No, 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 no. We are looking for some very specific items, if you will. Lucky enough for us, after arriving at the Outlander, Lander base, we actually found the item that we were looking for. We needed two tech prints for Enhanced Growth Vat Learning. These tech prints, of course, are from the Enhanced Growth Vat Learning mod, where we actually need two tech prints to unlock the research ability for them. We ended up purchasing both of them, which, as mentioned, was exactly what we needed, and then we began our journey all the way back home to base. It took us a little while to get back home, but once we had finally landed, we ended up having our Spartan Taylor, as well as one of our Kid Clones, soldiers take the tech prints and apply them to our research benches. As you can probably tell, I'm kind of inexperienced with the growth vat, so I was afraid that if we didn't do this right away that the clones would come out as adults or something and we couldn't put them back in there. So of course, I was absolutely booking it to try and get the enhanced growth vat learning to unlock growth vats and yada yada yada, I think you understand. <laughs> Luckily, of course, the researching of the technology was probably the fastest and easiest part because we have so many research benches and so many people in our army who can actually research. And finally, after a little bit of time had passed, we have finally unlocked the technology for enhanced learning, and we wasted no time immediately applying this to all of our growth vats for our clone baby bubblegum things. Jesus Christ, I don't even know how to talk. However, regardless of my inability to speak, a little while later we would also end up researching the combat enhanced learning as well, so not only are they going to be great at learning, I guess, but they're going to be combat ready as babies. Look, I told you I'm inexperienced at this. I was wholeheartedly waiting for one of them to just pop out with a rifle in its hand somehow that grew in the tank with it. I, I don't know. However, that would not be the case, and I learned just how this works once one of the little babies just fell right out on top of its head. Oh, poor little thing. Wait a minute, that's not a thing. That's a lady. A lady baby. Baby lady? It's a, it's a female baby. Yes, this first small little clone baby thing is our very first female clone into the army, which was quite revolutionary and historical for our clone army. Now, we wasted no time working on a wonderful nursery for all the children to be. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I was so excited that we had all of these clone babies being born, I kind of forgot that you can actually put them back in the growth vat and keep them growing, so I kept them out for a while. It's alright though, we needed some bonding time together. I did, however, decide to go into our storyteller settings 
and update the baby growth setting so instead of times 400 speed is actually times 600. Looking back on it now, I'm not really sure if that made much of a difference in the grand scheme of things, but I don't know, I tried. And the baby fever shook off a little bit from me, so I decided that we would get our asses back to work on some really important stuff like replacing the LAAT troop transport ship that we lost in the last episode. You know, you guys have been so nice because I haven't seen anyone call me out in the comment section for this just yet, but the LAAT ships are actually gunships, not troop transport. I guess they could be both, but I don't know, I've, I've been miss. Uh, labeling it. Things were going so well for us though, we were actually becoming one big happy clone army family with all of our new little babies, and I couldn't think of anything to make me any more happier until our Outlander friends sent us a combat supplier trade caravan. Now, you may be like, I don't give a shit, Rat Knight. Why, why is that important? Well, let me show you. This trade caravan not only had some normal weapons that we're used to, but they also had a cross guard lightsaber. However, with that being said, they were not willing to sell it as it was one of their people's personal weapons, I suppose. So we had to negotiate. Kind of. Alright, look, we killed them all, we blasted them into hell, and then we came over there and we took that beautiful lightsaber. They may have been our one and only ally on this damn planet, but it was well worth it for the red lightsaber. Just as well, we would also take a Prophet's Bane energy sword, which is the highest tier energy sword that is available for Wart Wart. So he and Napoleon are straight pimping, baby. They are some badass mofos and they look good. But speaking of looking good, I've been meaning to do this for a while, but we do have a nice modded helmet that I think would be absolutely perfect for Wart Wart's armor as well as his very own protection. And in my personal opinion, I think it looks damn fine. Now some time later we ended up having something interesting happen. We had an ancient white dragon wander in. I've had dragons added to the mod list since the very beginning of this series, but we've never actually had this event happen. The ancient white dragon was 1,468 years old, but we didn't give a shit. We were going to make it our bitch. I mean, um, our pet. Napoleon himself would go out and attempt to train the white dragon, but unfortunately it did not succeed the first time. That was quite alright though, we had plenty of other chances. Now we have to deal with something very important. We are going to nuke the shit out of one of the remaining void bases. Don't forget we still have two void bases left on the entire planet and we are extremely eager to make that number two into a number zero as soon as possible. This base would be no different than any other. We'll bomb the shit out of it all the same and kill the inhabitants as fast as we can. Because cleansing this universe of the filth that is void is our duty, our mission, and we will succeed. After using up our few remaining nuclear bombs, we all gathered outside the base preparing for an attack. Unsurprisingly, Void decided to try and attack us first, which of course did not work out in their favor. However, our ship was damaged pretty badly, so we had our Spartan Taylor stay behind and repair it as we went on to attack the base. By this point, of course, the majority of the Void soldiers, associates, and whatnot were all dead. The only remaining defenses they actually had were their mutants and their turrets. It was nothing we hadn't dealt with a thousand times, of course. Napoleon and Wart Wart both, though, would get their hands dirty with their new weapons, endlessly hacking and slashing into the mutants' flesh until they fell to our might. And fall they did, just as Void and all of their creations and their impact Empire will before the clone army. Some time later, of course, we had regrouped with the remainder of our squad and began to head back home. We returned home with all the goods and resources that we had looted from the Void base, and really at this point we just kind of sat still and waited. I let the colony progress on its own, and I just kind of waited around to see how fast the children would grow with the new speed set at 600. But to be honest with you, I am extremely impatient and I didn't feel like waiting any longer, especially since the game moves extremely slowly, most clips that you're seeing are sped up. So with all that being said, I decided to toss the babies back into their vats, and we would end up building a growth accelerator for each of the babies' vats. These are of course from the growth accelerator mod. It's also worth mentioning that during this time, as I just sat and let the colony go on its own and whatnot, it looks like Napoleon was able to tame that ancient white dragon. 
which was amazing because these dragons are some very powerful and very durable beasts. They would be perfect for raids and also defending ourselves. To truly demonstrate the power and just how wonderful this ancient white dragon would be to us and how valuable it would be as well, I decided to show you guys a little bit of its skills. As you can see, the dragon is very good at flying to short distances on the map. It wouldn't replace our ships by far, but it was pretty good. However, something the dragon could do that our LAAT ships could not is actually attack. The dragon had two different types of attacks. It had the dragon spit and the fire breath. The spit was more of an explosion, while the fire breath is more comparable to the impid's fire breath. Just much more powerful, of course. The ancient white dragon, though, is going to be a perfect addition to our army. Now, in the meantime, we would also put in several work orders for mining around our base. There are some small hills that we decided that we would strip mine to enable us to be able to see through them and around them, of course. This may seem a little bit bizarre, of course, but the reasoning behind it is so that we can always ensure we're able to see enemies that are behind the hills or coming around the hills, and, you know, you, you get the point. But after we finished up mining around some of those small hills, we decided it was finally time that we build ourselves a battery room on the base. Up until this point, we haven't really had a need for batteries or a battery room for that matter, but here recently I've noticed we're getting closer and closer to the capacity of our power output. So naturally, we decided to build a room chock full of batteries, that way we could store any excess power that we have during the day as a lot of our power is coming from solar panels and store it for night. It honestly took us a pretty long amount of time to finish up this battery room and of course it cost a smorgasbord of resources but in the end it was well worth it. Trust me when I say that this stored power will go a very long way especially when it comes to defending our base. One of my biggest hopes for this of course is that the stored power will be able to keep our solar flare shields going when Void comes back to attack us. Just as well of course helping keep our turrets online when that solar flare comes and when Void comes to try and take us down. And you know just as well as I do that they will almost definitely be coming very, very soon. You know, I'm actually very shocked because throughout this entire episode, we have yet to have one raid from Void. I mean, what gives? That's very unlike them. They only have one base left and I, I just... Oh no. Oh no.
After defeating the Void Abomination, Napoleon returned home on his loyal white dragon. He was unsure if he was going in the correct direction until we saw the green tint in the air from the toxic fallout, and there was no mistaking the sound of gunfire nearby. No, we were on our way home. We could only hope that our clone army was having the same success that we were. Unfortunately, though, it would appear that in our absence, Void was absolutely decimating our defenses, destroying turret after turret. We had never anticipated that our defenses would have to take on such large numbers of Void soldiers all at once. We always assumed that we would be attacking them in the last moments of this war, not the other way around. It would appear that we were sadly mistaken though in this. As we approached the front of the base, we saw large numbers of Void soldiers fighting with our clones. Our dragon flew in from the side, and as did we. Napoleon and his ancient white dragon had once again joined the fight. By this point though, all hell was breaking loose. Some Void soldiers were even using our barrage turrets as cover from our clone soldiers. Obviously, this didn't do them any good as we would destroy the turrets as well. Our men were under extremely heavy fire and attempted to make a strategic retreat back towards Napoleon, while having to leave several of their brothers lying on the ground. In the end though, with the help of our returned commander, we ended up defeating the Void Onslaught. Make no mistake though, this battle was anything but easy. Many of our men were severely injured, and unfortunately many of them as well had perished during the battle. But their sacrifices mean that we will ultimately win this war and we will cleanse this planet of Void. We had a massive cleanup to do though around the base. There were bodies littered literally everywhere. There were so many dead Void soldiers. It was honestly hard to fathom. Truly so gruesome. Your eyes see it but your head can't make any sense of it all. Such a massive loss of life was truly devastating. But better it be the horrible, disgusting Void members than one of our clones, or God forbid one of our chewed up bubblegum baby soldiers, who it would appear came very close to a demise of their own during the battle. Thankfully though, unlike Void, we protect our own here. Many of our soldiers, damn good soldiers, gave their lives to protect those children as well as the values and our mission that we hold so dear. And in the end, we ended up having to dig seven new graves for seven of our fallen brethren. But now with our horrific members buried, we could finally begin the cleanup effort. We were going to go around this massive base of ours and begin repairs that were needed. Just as well, of course, we're going to begin cleaning up the mess that was made as well as tending to our wounded. And of course, this was no easy task, as there was a lot to do. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot. There were so many bodies to clean up and whatnot, but eventually we would do it. It would take several days, but that didn't matter to us, of course, because we had plenty of time on our hands, and we also had revenge on our minds, firmly set on the mission of destroying Void. Some time later, the green in the air had finally cleared up and the shit was out of our lungs. We could breathe once more. So we went around, began repairing our defenses and whatnot. There was no way for us to rebuild every single turret today as we didn't have enough time for that. At least not if we had planned on achieving our one true mission today of attacking the last void base and absolutely eradicating it. However, as you might have noticed, we're a bit low on manpower now after losing several of our clone soldiers. So it was time for me to sit and wait for these babies to grow into children. Children that can hold rifles and that can fight, but they're not gonna be much use to us if we don't actually start training them and preparing them for the battle to come. Now look, I know what you're thinking, and I agree. I wasn't very sure that these little chewed up bubblegum children were gonna be much use to us either, but we would have to try. And there was no one better for the job than our Spartan Taylor, who up until this point has honestly been pretty underutilized. So we built a training facility and created the children a bunch of weapons and Taylor got to work showing them how to fight, just really helping them work on their combat skills in general, like shooting and obviously things like that. However, most important of all, Taylor help them learn how to work as a team. Now, of course, we've always thought of our clone soldiers as brothers, but these clones here just, they feel so much closer and more of siblings to me, more of a close-knit family. Of course, though, I did watch them all grow up in oversized test tubes, so. After training together for a long period of time, they were finally finished, all grown up, our vat-grown clone soldiers were ready, led by Kid Omega, the Omega 
clone squad. To make things more interesting, I also allowed them to customize their armor to give themselves a more individual look. But now with the growing and training of our Omega clone squad finished, we can finally begin working on a new ship once again. Of course, we continue losing ships over and over, but hopefully we don't lose this one this time. Truthfully though, it's really not a big deal. We can always make another, and besides, I would trade one ship to destroy the last singular remaining Void Fortress on the entire planet. Yes, you heard me correctly, the last remaining Void Fortress. I must say that this episode is make or break. This will be the last episode of our Clone Army series. Well, at least for season one. If you guys really like it, be sure to let me know in the comment section. Maybe we'll do a season two. Because of course there are many, many, many more planets throughout this universe that must be cleansed of the disease that is Void. Now by this point we had actually made Wart Wart and Napoleon their very own singular starfighter ships while our troops, the new Omega clone squad included, paced around the cantina just eager to rip and tear and absolutely annihilate Void. And so we would give them that exact opportunity. We all launched in our brand new ships and began heading off towards the last remaining fortress. This was make or break. Do or die. Thanks to the loading glitch that occasionally happens, we could see just how many Void soldiers were at this fortress, as well as their mutants. We began landing and immediately began firing upon their turrets and other defenses. Unfortunately though, our ships were not able to land very close together, so our other troops would have to begin moving towards the other squads and link up together. We would of course attempt to bring all of the squads to the front of the base so that we could infiltrate there and take out any remaining defenses. Which of course was a lot easier than it sounds because each squad was getting absolutely hammered by bullets as they were fighting their way towards the front of this void fortress. But as you already know, it would take a lot more than bullets to put out the fire in our bellies. After destroying their defenses, we all gathered in front of the base. Napoleon, Taylor, Wart Wart, Crimson, Kid Omega, and the remaining troopers. This is what we came here for. This is what we've been fighting so hard to achieve. This is why the Cosmic Space Rat brought Napoleon and the other troops back to life. This was our mission, and we would be damned if anyone would get in our way. We've come so close. Nothing is going to stop us now. This is it, my friends. This is the end of Void on this planet. We couldn't have done it without each other. We couldn't have done it without the friends we've made along the way, but most importantly, we couldn't have done it without you. But now it's time we finish this fight once and for all. Many of the Void members would attempt to hide in their bunks, but there was nowhere that they could hide from our plasma grenades and then our wrath. We easily mowed down the Void Associates hiding within like hot butter on a summer day with a spoon or something. We also killed some Black Titans. You, you know, we killed everything. With the Void Abomination no more, they had nothing left up their sleeve that could stop us. We quickly infiltrated their base and went room to room, destroying turrets, destroying Void Associates, destroying mutants, anything that we could get our hands on. Every single last square inch of this fortress would be cleansed by our holy blaster fire. Complete sterilized by the supercharged plasma coming from Wart Wart's rifles. It was an absolute bloodbath. After killing off all the associates, we then began working to kill all the mutants that they had created. This being the last remaining Void Fortress, they had an absolutely ungodly amount of mutants created. That mattered very little to us though. We've gotten this far. We weren't about to let these disgusting abominations stop us. It didn't matter how many of them we had to butcher. We were going to win. After killing off the majority, of the abominations, we found one hiding on the east wing of the base. We had something very special in store for breaching these walls. Look, you and I both know that I couldn't come to the last remaining Void Fortress and not detonate at least one nuclear bomb. We gave Taylor the great honor of being the one who actually gets to detonate it. Unfortunately though, this would end up in her getting slightly caught in the tail end of the nuclear blast. Yeah, she was standing just a teeny tiny bit too close, but she was fine. Well, as fine as you could be after getting hit by a nuclear bomb blast, which was pretty damn fine in her case. We then began to infiltrate the eastern wing of this massive fortress and killed the last remaining mutant. And with the death of that last remaining void creation, so went their legacy on this planet, as well as their massive chokehold. The void has fallen, and the clones are here. We are the new galactic superpower rising. Our home planet is just the start. Let every single void base in the entire galaxy and the entire universe look as this one does. 
a heaping hunk of rubble. Let Void be nothing more than a forgotten nightmare. After finishing off the last remaining Void Fortress, we began the long journey back home. We had finally arrived. Everyone on each ship was celebrating. We had finally done it. We had finally defeated the twisted, horrid, dark empire. We were successful. But of course, with Void gone, that does mean that this planet is going to need some new overlords. And who better to fill the void, pardon my pun, than our clone regime. But with this last remaining episode coming to a close, I just want to thank you guys so much. This would have never been possible without you, and I love you all very, very much. But of course, my friends, fear not, for this is not goodbye. It is simply until I see you again. That by far did not go to plan, but at least it looks like we've made it out in one piece. We can only hope that our squad members are having the same luck that we are tonight. Speaking of, we're going to need to quickly find some shelter. God only knows what lurks on this planet when the sun goes down. There appears to be a cave in the distance. It wasn't exactly ideal, but it was better than sleeping out in the rain exposed. There is a pale blue light at the end of the cave. Looks to be fluorescent fungus. Next to some poor sap who doesn't appear to have been near as lucky as we were. At the moment though, we have more important things to deal with. This cave seems secure enough. It'd be nice to take the helmet off her. Just a moment, get some fresh air. Uh, that is so much better. For now, I need to try to get some shut eye. Once the storm passes in the morning, I'll try to regroup with the others. Uh, well, that wasn't exactly the best sleep of my life. Looks like the storm is fully passed, though. I should be able to use my transponder now to track my squad members. Uh, let's see. Extremely damaged, but it still appears to be functioning properly. Looks like I'll need to head northwest to find the corporal's pod. Ox, old boy, I hope you've got your walking shoes on. I have a feeling this is going to take a very long time. Hmm, let's see. It shouldn't be too much... Ah, I believe that may be it there in the distance. I just hope that the corporal's alright. The pod still appears to be closed, but damaged. Hmm, let's see. I guess maybe I could... <laughs>
Thankfully, Sergeant Cole and Corporal Grimm had made it out of their pods without a scratch as well and had already regrouped with one another. And of course, as you saw, they discovered me not a moment too soon, I might add, before my hinge head friend came back for seconds. I could have taken him though, you know. Probably. Now that the three of us have finally reunited after landing on the planet, though, we're going to need to set up a temporary base of operations. We're going to need to work to set up power as well as a comms console. Unfortunately, the mobile comms console in Sergeant Cole's pod was destroyed upon impact with the planet. And as you can see, there's plenty of great spots in this desolate, barren, polluted wasteland. So I suppose with that being said, there's really nothing left for us to do but get to work on a base. Now, of course, we want our our top secret mission on this planet to be as discreet as possible so we're going to build our base within this small mountain. The idea of course being that it's just going to look like a normal mountain on the outside not a hollow mountain where three ODSTs are staying. The only issue with that being of course it's going to be extremely difficult to mine through this rock with the limited tools that we've been provided by the UNSC but we'll make it work. We always do. For our first night at the base, Private Ox would actually sleep just outside the doorway in case something went bump in the night. Thankfully though, nothing ever did. The very next day though, of course, for basically the entire day, we would continue the exhausting and back-breaking work of digging throughout this hill. Now, of course, as we mentioned, we are trying to keep a bit of a low profile. However, Sergeant Cole decided to tear down some of these stone runes. That way we would have blocks to actually build a door. A stone door is more secure of course, but it would also blend in much better with the rock of the mountain, thus of course making it much harder to detect the fact that there is indeed a base here, but this would also give us peace of mind. We would also try to stick with the idea of using the stone we had available under the hill, but that does mean that we're going to need to create a stone cutting bench, which does require wood. After cutting down several trees, we would end up building said bench so that we could begin processing all the marble chunks that we had dug out under the mountain and begin turning them into into marble blocks, making us and our base somewhat self-sufficient for the most part. Obviously, of course, this was nothing but a drop in a very, very large bucket of all the work that we had to do, but it was a bit of a start. At least now we wouldn't have to lie on the floor at night and we had some semi-decent places to lay our weary heads. The very next day, we began to realize that keeping a low profile probably means that we shouldn't have a stinky Sanghealy carcass rotting in front of the base. But of course, with that being said, any disturbed ground where we would try to bury him in a grave, there would also be some suspicions raised. So we decided to take the rotting Sanghealy carcass to some nearby ruins where there was already a sarcophagus from long ago. Ah, hidden in plain sight. Later on in the evening, as Sergeant Cole was cutting up more marble chunks in a marble Marble blocks, Private Ox and Corporal Grimm came down to discuss them going out and hunting, as they were running very low on packaged survival meals and they were needing some protein in their diet. The sergeant of course granted this request, but requested that they keep a very low profile as to not be found out. We of course didn't want to compromise the mission in any way, shape, or form, and then the two of them began to venture out into the wilderness looking for big game. Grim appeared to tag the elk, but the massive animal survived the shot and took off running into this cave. And unfortunately, our only option is going to be to go into the cave after it, as we couldn't risk firing another shot from the sniper rifle and exposing ourselves, compromising the mission. The cave was littered with blood and animal carcasses. It was very possible that there was a predator in here. Finally, after much walking, though, we stumbled upon the corpse of the elk that we had shot, but it appeared that it was dead from several gash marks to the side. And then, we saw it. A massive, disgusting, deformed creature. It began chasing us all throughout the cave. After landing several shots on the monster, it began to run back into the cave where it came from. Thankfully, our injuries were non-life-threatening, but it did get many hits in on us. However, thankfully, the worst injury of all to us was possibly to our egos and maybe to our psyche from seeing such a disgusting creature. It mostly just caught us off guard is all. But Grim would begin healing herself as Ox stood guard, and once that was finally completed, hours later, they finally returned home. Having to walk through the dark, smog 
foggy, polluted landscape, knowing that a beast like that was on the loose in the area wasn't very reassuring. But thankfully, we had finally returned and we were greeted by the sergeant who was wondering where we were and why we hadn't returned with any meat. Of course, we frantically, quickly explained the situation to him and unfortunately, he was not shocked. The intel that we had received about the planet ahead of time talked about monstrous creatures and many unknown threats to the UNSC. Thankfully though, while we were out hunting, the sergeant had acquired the resources that we needed to build a generator. Finally, we would have electricity. And with a power generator as well as electricity, that also means we can finally build some lights. Which of course would be much more convenient because up until this point we've been using the built-in night vision sensors in our helmets. Not only had the sergeant acquired the resources to build a power generator, but he had also cut up so much marble block that we could finally build a table and some chairs. It wasn't exactly crucial to the mission, but it could be crucial to our sanity. However, something that was actually indeed crucial to the mission was a comms console, so we wasted no time getting to work on one. With this comms console, we would finally once again be able to speak with our commanding officers that are over this mission, which we desperately needed to do because of how sensitive this mission was, we had very limited intel. So with the comms console built and finally powered up, it was time for us to find out what we're doing here or who we're killing. Power on. Welcome, Private Oxford. Well, it would appear that we now know our mission. Our three ODSTs are being tasked with taking out a prominent Sangheili leader of the Covenant Remnant forces on this planet. And it's all beginning to make sense why this planet is so shitty and hostile. It's the only place that these Remnant forces could hide. This planet is apparently some sort of testing ground for Void Abominations, which also explains the massive monster we fought in the cave. Apparently the creatures they release on this planet are so dangerous that there are no longer any labs on the surface. But of course that does not mean that the entire planet is absent of void forces. The only people currently inhabiting this planet are us, Covenant Remnant forces, pirates, rebel scum, and other pieces of trash. This mission is much more dangerous than we had initially thought, and we're most likely going to be here for quite a while. We're going to need to try to keep our minds sharp. To do so, of course, we're going to need to improvise with the resources we have available, so we used the stone blocks from a nearby rune to build a chess table. Now, this may seem a bit silly, seeing how we're going to battle against aliens, rebels, pirates, and possibly even void, but of course, war is all about staying two steps ahead of your enemy, just the same as chess. Speaking of which, it would appear in this foggy evening we have a rebel scout arriving nearby. They should not be able to detect us here, so it's most likely that they saw our pods days ago as we fell. Now of course normally this wouldn't be an issue, we would just stay within our base and wait for the scout to see nothing and then leave. Unfortunately though, they just so happened to enter the area as we were all three already outside, so that means that we couldn't go back inside without the scout catching us, thus we're going to have to take care of them. And of course by take care of them, I mean we're all three going to start blasting the absolute shit out of her until she's dead. Tomato, tomato. She hid in the corner and began returning fire against us. But then we began to hear s- Oh god. Oh god. Void has arrived. They must have detected our electricity or something with advanced technology. How could they know we're here? One of the Void soldiers burst forth from the pod and very quickly ran. We'd never seen someone so fast in our lives. Dear God, what have we gotten ourselves into? This is not a mission for ODSTs. Void, they're Spartan killers. We can't handle this. No. No, damn it, we are ODSTs. We are humanity. We are the only light that stands between a world like this of darkness and everyone else. We would have to do something. So as the Void Soldier was looking for us, we began to creep around to the side of the hill. We were going to try to rush them, all three of us. Well, we got their attention. Hmm. Where did he... <laughs> Somehow we won, I think. Regardless, we were alive, and that was much more than we expected from the encounter. To think three ODSTs took down a Void Soldier? 
no one would believe us. We had managed to escape from the Void Soldier pretty well unscathed, all but Ox, who took one hell of a beating during the battle. Even a punch or two from those Void Bionics can be deadly. I cannot stress how very, very lucky we were. But more importantly, we were compromised. Our position here was compromised. We would need to move as soon as possible. But we wouldn't be able to move until Ox was at least somewhat patched up. As I mentioned, those Void Bionics can be deadly, and from the gash in Ox's forehead, we would need to stop the external bleeding and ensure that he doesn't have any internal bleeding before we move. To which we did. It took basically all night and day, but eventually he was patched up. He still couldn't walk, so we would have to carry him. Luckily, our night vision sensors and our helmets were not damaged during the battle, ensuring that we would be able to move throughout the dark of night. Of course, not only would we need to be able to move at night, we would also need to be able to move effectively, and most important, silently. We walked for hours, but eventually we found a small section in a hillside where we could camp for the night. And I know what you're thinking, building a fire may seem very foolish, and I agree, but with how polluted the planet is, it doesn't get much sunlight during the daytime, meaning that it gets very cold at night, so it would be quite crucial. Looks like we have nothing to fear. Just some Covenant forces fighting some of these abominations. We would kill our campfire, though, to ensure that we don't end up being the ones having to fight either of them. We've seen enough action for one day. We just want to kill our target and get off this damn hellish planet. We would begin walking for several days, during which time, thankfully, Ox healed up enough that he could walk again on his own. And hopefully, if the occasion calls for it, he'll be able to fight again on his own. Finally, we had arrived. We would need to hurry and find a vantage point, for the target would be arriving at any moment. It would appear that the Covenant forces are using some type of old Federation base as their base of operations. The walls of the base are made of forum, meaning they're basically impenetrable. We'll need to ensure that we kill the target before he makes it inside. There he is. This is our chance. We can't miss. We managed to hit our target, but now we've been compromised. Looks like we'll have to fight our way out of this one. Wait a minute, do you... do you see that? What is that? Good God. Our corporal's been hit. She's... she's dead. We need to retreat. We need to move now. We have to. We have to move. We have to get out of here. I'm sorry, corporal. We began running as fast as we could, as far as we could, in between the hills to try and get away from the elites. And then we stumbled upon it. A massive spherical object that had fallen from the sky. This is the massive object that shook the ground, that caused the corporal to miss her shot. It was absolutely massive and there was a huge crack down the middle of it. But not only that, we could hear noises within. There was something in there. Something.
two days after the devastating loss of Sergeant Cole, Private Ox is on his way home. I wish I could tell you the home that I was referring to was the planet that he was born on or the planet that he lived on, but unfortunately the home that I am referring to is the old base where he and his two colleagues stayed. Without the sergeant or the corporal, Private Ox was all on his own, and the horrific creatures upon this planet were more than dangerous. It would be impossible for him to survive without help. Yes, he would surely perish without reinforcements. The only option he had now was to try and make it back to the old base and send out a distress signal to the UNSC. Unfortunately though, as many things on this planet, that was much easier said than done. As Ox made the extremely long journey all the way back to the old base on foot through the thundering rain, he could see the old lights on just outside the base. It would appear that it is now inhabited. And of course, the inhabitants of the old base are almost definitely not friendly. Looks like the United Rebellion has set up shop here. Still yet though, it would be in our best interest to try and avoid a conflict with them. It is possible we may be able to sneak by them. Besides, any conflict with them could end up in gunfire, and any gunfire could draw unwanted attention from other rebels, or even worse, from Void or their creatures. After entering the base, luckily it would appear the comms console is still online. Looks like we should be able to send out a distress signal as well. Alright, there we go. That should do the trick. Now Well, unfortunately, that didn't go according to plan, and we did make a little bit of noise, but hopefully no one heard us. It Well, that wasn't exactly the rescue that Private Ox was looking for, but I guess at least he's alive. And it does seem that he'll remain that way. Knowing Napoleon and the clone army, if they wanted Private Ox dead, he would already be dead. Although it does seem that they have a lot of questions about his involvement on that planet as well as with Void. Sometime later, the UNSC finally received the same distress call that Napoleon responded to, just at a much later time with much fewer numbers. However, leading the squad of Marines into danger was Corporal Haley. Haley was actually the sister of none other than Sergeant Cole. But she came to rescue Sergeant Cole and Private Ox, not knowing that Ox had left and her brother had died. Hello there. I would just like to thank all of you for making this miniseries possible. Unfortunately, this is going to be the last episode of the ODST miniseries. Um, I didn't really plan on this going past three or four episodes. Um, I didn't really expect too many people to uh, see it, I guess. Some people seem to be pretty interested, thankfully. <laughs> but it was more of uh, just a fun little passion project that was going to tie in with our Clone Army Season 2 which is coming up soon. I don't think I have an exact time or anything planned for it, just really when I can get around to it. Um, you know, we got a couple of series, quite a few series going at this time, and uh, we're trying to get quite a few more going and that sort of thing, and um, it's just kind of time-consuming and stuff like that. Uh, but we're definitely going to have the ODSTs cross paths with the clone, uh, clone army, I can't talk. <laughs> um, and uh, we're going to be facing off against Void as well as some other foes. The UNSC is coming back, everybody's coming back, we're all going to have a big fun time. It's, 
It's going to be wonderful. <laughs> but I love you guys ever so much. I just wanted to thank you so much for watching. I literally could not make this possible without you guys. And I wouldn't do it without you guys. Um, without all of your wonderful feedback, your wonderful comments, and just the fact that you guys love these series and mini series. So thank you guys. You're wonderful. I love you ever so much. And I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.